All right, guys. So again, welcome to the Elephant Challenge. This is primarily for beginners, people that are just starting out their journey saying, man, I wish somebody would stop, slow down, help me out. Well, lucky you. You are here. Okay. You are here. And by the way, we are on a live Zoom right now. So go to elephantchallenge.info if you want to jump into the live challenge. We are going to be covering where are my buyers, the people that I want to do business with, my customers. We're going to be going over that today. My wife's going to come in and we're going to be laying down all of that. So it should be really, really good. And then we're going to be doing market research on where our buyers are buying and what they are buying, where the most active hotspots are in my market. Then today, we are going to give you guys not only a script, but my wife and I are going to call some buyers. Okay, We're going to call some buyers and the homework for tonight, I want everybody to write this in the side chat, homework for tonight is that you need to have two to three buyers before we start the challenge tomorrow. Okay, You want to have two to three buyers before we start the challenge tomorrow. Now, we've got 1,300 people on the live Zoom. We've probably got a couple hundred people that will end up over on YouTube. If you are on YouTube, we are live. Okay, We are live and um, we want you guys in here. We want you guys hanging out in the Zoom because here's where here's what happens in the Zoom, the bonus stuff. The bonus stuff is right here. We're going to be pairing you guys up with our community leaders today. Okay, our leaders are going to come in. They're going to help you raising money, LLCs. They're going to help you calling sellers, creative finance, cash flips. If you guys are knuckleheads and like the birth strategy, they'll even help you out there. Primarily, we've got three segments of our community that are going to be coming in and helping you guys out today. And those are sub two. Shout out sub two in the side comments if you guys are sub two. We are going to have Gator. They're going to help you out with funding. Okay. You need money? Boom, right here. Money, money, money right here. The, you need money? Make sure you communicate with a Gator. With a sub two community member, you're going to be able to help. They're going to help you out with cash deals, creative deals. They're going to help you out with, um, man, I could calling sellers, negotiating, okay, walking through contracts, walking through everything. And then you're going to have our top tier TCs, transaction coordinators, people that understand how to do the paperwork, running the transactions, et cetera. If you're a transaction coordinator trained by uh, our community, say me, that's me. I'm here. I've been trained. I know what I'm doing. I can help out. I'm a top tier TC. So these groups of people are here today. They are here to help you. This is not just about pace. My goal was always to build a community of people that could truly change the industry, not just the market. We are the industry leaders. We are helping you guys not only find the deals, fund the deals, and then run the deals right there. That is the goal of the Elephant Challenge. Now, Angie Milanazzo, one of our leaders, she has done so many deals with baby elephants. Baby elephants are the people that are non-students, non-community members that are just saying, help me. I want to be in, in touch with all the leaders here. Angie Milanazzo, I think she sent out 91 LOIs last week. 91 LOIs. That's amazing. LOI stands for letter of intent. So that means you found an opportunity, a house that is listed on the market. And you sent offers, 91 offers, okay? And uh, sorry, she sent 91 LOIs. She sent in 14 contracts. That's in one week, okay? Those are the people that come to the Elephant Challenge. They're the people that are helping us run the back end and helping support you guys, okay? We'll make sure that we give you their PDF today. We will make sure you get paired in with them, all right? Now, uh, Carly, I don't know if you have the ability to come up here and chat with me for a minute, but I'd love to chat with you. People want to see what Carly looks like. By the way, guys, don't even ask the question. Carly is definitely not single. She is married. Okay. I get a lot of, a lot of you knuckleheads come in here and be like, yo, is this blonde married? The answer is yes, she is. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you for helping us run the back end of, um, the Elephant Challenge. You do a lot behind the scenes that nobody even realizes and knows. So thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Okay. So what I want to do today is I want to make sure that you 
tell me that you do have a PDF. I know you sent it to me, but do you have do. a PDF that you could actually share for just a 10 seconds? Do. It's in share the for chat. 10 seconds. We got a well, list of people. Pause the chat and then I will put it in the chat. So everybody. I don't want you to put it in the chat yet. I want you to show it to me on the screen for just oh, a I second. I want to show it. Yes, I can do that. Let me pull it up. I want you to share share it on the screen for just a second and then pull it back down. What I want to do is, yes, I'm teasing the audience. I'm letting the audience know that we're going to be giving this uh, PDF away today at the end of the challenge, which is in about two hours and 10 minutes. The good juicy stuff starts in about 10 minutes, guys. Okay, there you go. We got our people. Now you can unshare that, please. All right. I believe Stop. you actually have a couple of uh, you have a couple of people that have not made it to that. Now there's there's some smart people. They're the usually the engineers in New Jersey that have Androids. They probably took a screenshot of that. They're thinking they're very smart guys. You don't need to take a screenshot of it. We're going to give it to you. I just wanted to let you guys know have a visual because men are visual people. Um, that we have something cool. We we're going to put you guys in touch with some absolute leaders in our community. They're going to help you go guys go out and do not only cash deals but also creative deals. So, um, Carly, can you make sure that you communicate with, uh, actually, no, Laura's already set up. She's, we've got her going. Eric will probably help her out in, uh, probably about 30 to 40 minutes. She'll come in here. And, um, is Benson here today? Carly has a habit of muting herself. Every single time. Yes. Benson is here. He's not backstage quite yet. I just texted him and I said, I just reminded him he'll be back here in just a minute. All right, cool. Let's do it. Um, Carly, I'm going to answer one question um, from the people. There's six people that have their hands raised. I'm going to answer one of those questions. So thank you so much. Everybody give Carly some love. Give her some added. The attitude of gratitude goes a long way in our world. Tell her how much you appreciate her. Thank you so much. Um, Eric, let's uh, go over to the participants. Let's go and choose somebody and let's tell them to speak. You go over to the main page. There you go. You got it. No, no, no. Down below. Guys, uh, be patient with Eric. He's figuring out that Zoom is actually a real thing. No, 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 no. Go down to participants, click on it. Okay. And it's going to pull up a separate screen. Go to the top. Should have a separate screen probably on your screen that I can't see. Oh, Eric. There it is. Boom. All right, let's go to attendees, 1,306 people. Thank you guys so much. Let's go to Steve Lundy and say, allow to talk. Steve, we are unmuting you. You have about five seconds to unmute yourself and uh, tell me what you got. Uh, did I raise my hand or something? You sure did, my friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I did that by mistake. Uh, I don't have anything uh, to, to No say. problem. It happens. Hey, Eric, do me a favor. Un, un um, raise everybody's hands while you can. You got Craig Robertson that just raised his hand. So I assume he knows he's meant to raise his hand. Let's go to Craig. Craig, what do you got? Steve, Steve, uh, go to Steve Lundy and pull him off the stage, Eric. Eric, can you imagine I do this all myself while I'm doing everything I'm doing? Craig, what do you got for me, brother? How you doing, Pace? I'm killing the game, bro. Look at my cowboy hat. <laughs> what, what, what do you got for me, brother? Uh... I've been in sub two for like about a buff and Oh, you're brand I'm, new, baby. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm just ready to get my first deal and I'm ready to go. And, and I work a lot. That's, that's my thing is I work like 10, 15 hours a day at my W2. And it's just, I don't have a lot of time. So the zooms are like, I miss a lot of zooms. So I, I, I look at the zooms like, like in the, Here, in like here's the what I would do, Craig. You want to get a first deal really fast, regardless of your W2 outcome? Yeah. Go and watch, uh, go and watch a Zoom about Jasper. Okay. Jasper is one of our sub two community members. He has a W2 as well. He was also in college. He's got a girlfriend. He's got all the responsibilities that all of us do have. He just went and tied in with another sub two student's business and said, let me just call on your existing leads two hours a day after my W2. That's okay. the benefit of working with the sub two community is that you get to like lock in with somebody else's business that's already generating leads that could utilize you two to three hours a day. Guess what you don't have to do? You don't have to generate the leads. You don't have to screen the leads. You don't have to buy the software. You don't have to spend the money on the leads. You just sit there and benefit from somebody else's already existing business. There's your, there's your avatar. Your avatar, go back to the avatar series. Your avatar is work for someone else avatar. 
but I've been working for somebody else for my whole life. I'm tired of that. Okay, so I guess we could just keep using the excuse of I don't have time to tune into my Zooms. No, 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 no. So which one no. do you prefer? Yeah, let me go to work. Go to work. Here's the thing. If you would have gone and worked with somebody else on their team for 30 days, you would have already gotten a deal. Uh, but your, re your resistance to working for somebody else, by the way, you're working for an entrepreneur who also wants you to be an entrepreneur. That's what the sub two community is about. You're not leveraging the community. Go in and leverage the community. There's thousands of sub two students. Where do you live, Craig? I live in Alabama, Madison. Oh my gosh. Alabama, Madison, Alabama. I absolutely love Madison, Alabama. This is a beautiful so what, part of the country. When are you coming out here? Um, when it's not so freaking humid, my my guy. It's so humid there, man. <laughs> it, it, Maybe wintertime. Here. Here's what you do. Here's your goal. Your goal is to go and uh, lock in with a sub two community member, either in, it doesn't matter where they're at, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and join their team and say, I have a goal of getting my first deal in the first 30 to 60 days working with their existing leads. I mean, I can see the Bash Bros right here. Ed, Eddie, Marin, Tyler, those guys have leads. They could use you as somebody on their acquisition team. You get a deal, you get two deals. You're like, oh my gosh, this business is real. That's I'm step number one. Four deals a month. That's it. I don't even think you need four deals a month. I mean, you probably could do one and a half deals a month and probably quit your job. You think so? Okay. Yeah. I mean, unless you're making, what are you making? 40 grand a month at your job? Oh, I wish. Okay. Well, what do you need four deals a month for? Well, I just want to make sure that everything is going good. Like, I mean, I'm not just going to quit my job. I get four, two deals this month and the next month I don't get any deals. Like that's not how I, it works. I've never heard of that. <laughs> you never heard of that? Mm -mm. Unless you're like a YouTube person, you're just watching YouTube. But if you're part of a community, I don't hear that. People don't go and do two deals. All of a sudden they're doing two deals in a month and they go to zero. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I agree. I, I, in, in, you, in, Sub two, I've never heard of that, but it's just a middle class mindset. Like, don't like, you know, count your chickens before they hatch. Like, you know, mm, yeah, that's the language of the poor, my brother. I'm been poor all my life. Yeah, I, I used to be, and I stopped. I stopped the, with the language of the poor. You okay. got the language of the poor, and the language of the poor is what if, what well, if, what if, what if, what what if. Craig, you just went and worked for one of the sub two students for 30 days, got a deal, go, oh my gosh. R Craig, have you ever had something happen to you in your life where an entire world just opened up that you didn't even know existed? No. Yes, you have. When you found out what sub two is, you did. You're absolutely, you absolutely correct. You're absolutely okay. correct. Yeah, so it's the yeah. same thing that when you get your first deal, everybody in here, tell me you guys agree. The second you guys get your first deal, does your entire life change? The perception, the optics, everything in your life changes because you're like, wow, this is not just some YouTube stuff. This is not just some guy doing all this, you know, fancy dancy stuff, dancing around in a cowboy hat. This is real. I got to check. Okay. Once you hit that, the conversation is different. Okay. The conversation is different. Okay. Okay. And the what ifs, oh my gosh, what if? It works out, bro. What if it works out? What if, well, let's go back in a time machine. This is the last question I'll ask you. What if you went and worked with one of the sub two students that probably is posting the Facebook group, hey, I need acquisition people. And you're like, I am about to work with somebody else. I'm not about to work for somebody else. I've been working for somebody else my whole life. What if you just went and collaborated with them for 30 days? What would have happened? Somebody did like, like two days ago. And you, you, you had the, you had the mindset of the middle class, which is I'm about to work with nobody. Right. Okay. I got you. I got you. You, you and I on the same page, brother. We are. We are. All right. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, Craig. Let's go. Let's do one more before we bring up Benson. You don't want to remove him. You want to stop him from speaking. There you go. Disable talking at the top. You guys ever hear a presenter knows more about how to present and how to run the back end than anybody else? I've been doing it all myself. Eric's doing a great job though. All right, Eric, let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, let's see. Let's go to a girl. What do we got? We got a girl in here, Sabrina. Let's go to Sabrina. Got to mix it up a little bit. Sabrina, what do you got for me? 
go back to it. Eric, you had to go, go away and then come back. There you go. Good. Teach all the tips of tips of the trade. Sabrina, what's up? Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. Awesome. I was hoping I'd be chosen. Hell yeah. <laughs> Manifestation okay. right there. Yes, yes, yes. Thank God. Okay. So what am I doing on here? What am I talking about? So you showed up. How long, how late did you show up? Um, probably just maybe about 10 minutes ago, 15. Okay. So you showed up 50 minutes late. Well, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I've been here from the beginning, but okay, I, okay. So I when was you say, driving. you say, why driving, am I up here? Just focused. You raised your hand. Ask me a question. Your hand is raised. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, I'm new. Okay. I'm new to the, to wholesaling. I started in about February, uh -huh. early February. And so I haven't gotten my first deal yet. Perfect. I did get a property under contract, but it fell through because I didn't do what you said in the first couple minutes, which is find the buyer first. My gosh, Sabrina, go I, I don't know how much luckier I could have gotten to pick on you than right now. Like how great is it that you, you literally got your first contract and it fell through doing the opposite of what I was just talking about at the beginning. Guys, does that not just reaffirm everything we're going to be talking about today? Sabrina, how sucky was that? You got something under contract. I mean, you negotiated with horrible. a seller. It felt Did you horrible. look like a complete asshole? I felt, I felt low. I felt yeah, I really low because I've been everyone there too, was celebrating that I got a, a deal under contract. And then mm -hmm. when it fell through, I had to let everyone know, oh, I'm sorry. I don't have a deal anymore, which I didn't even know wasn't a deal because you have to have a buyer to have a deal. That is correct. So you had a contract. I've learned not so a deal. much already. <laughs> you love it. You've been in YouTube University primarily since February. So I signed up for a class. Um, I'm not going to name the name of it. I paid about eighty five hundred dollars, and that's what's been teaching me about real estate investing. Okay, cool. Well, my mm -hmm. YouTube channel is free and it will teach you more than an $8,500 course will ever teach you. I've learned so much from you so far. Does anybody agree with that? With my YouTube channel will blow away a $50,000 mentorship. Now, I don't, just so you know, Sabrina, I don't have a mentorship. I have a community. It's very different, right? People are, everybody in here, you, as you can tell, they're very active. They're helping each other. This is the community that we built. My, my community is so, so big on go giving. They actually come into the free group of people like you, Sabrina, that are like, Yo, I paid some other knucklehead that is that gave me a class. Right. Like, okay, I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking you, but nobody needs a class anymore. People need community, right? right? You need somebody that's going to help you get on the phone, help you verify that a deal is a deal. You, you need somebody else other than a mentor, okay? Mentors, they kind of suck, okay? From, from that perspective, like here's my class, pay me 8,500 bucks. And they just, that's what you get as a class. And like, what, what do you guys get? One, one weekly zoom a week? Uh, well, no, this, it started off as a weekly zoom. Now it's about four days a week, four or five days a week. Um, okay. we have strategy And how long sessions. does this go on? It's only about six months. Mm, that sounds great. <laughs> hey, sub two Gator top tier TC. How long does our community go? Look at the side chat. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that after investing in the program, I. Sabrina, uh, let yeah. me ask you a question. If somebody wanted a relationship with you, why would they limit you to six months? Yeah. Don't, don't um, they want to see you successful? So you sell them deals at some point. The, the way a mentor should make money in a real estate mentorship is the primary source of their income should come from getting, doing deals with their student base right? So mm -hmm. just FYI, for the next one that you sign up for, make sure that you, and I, look, I go to classes. I spend a hundred thousand dollars a year or so on education. I'm all about education. The problem is I realize that in this information age, people need less information. They need more implementation. And what people that are just doing Zooms are lacking is they're lacking connection with other human beings that can actually go on appointments with you, help you fill out contracts, do the so implementation true. part. Right? So true. So you're, you know exactly you're February, you're you got a contract, you negotiated it with a seller. It fell through. Uh, so I Were you direct to seller or direct this, to agent? It was di direct to agent. Um, and I did a dual agency. So I learned about that on YouTube as well. Dual agency, mm. double dipping. Nice. <laughs> and um, so I offered it to the agent. She took it and um, she presented me with the best, with the seller with the best offer. However, it was still too high. And that was a rookie move. 
um, and I wasn't able to lock up an uh, end buyer in time. So that fell through. It made me a little discouraged, to be honest with you, but I'm back up and um, looking for properties. As a matter of fact, this is my question to you, Pace. I want to make sure, because I've been actually talking about you the last few days, and mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say to who, because you actually know the people. You just met up with them, I think, in a phone call about a lending opportunity. That's really great. I'm a, um, so I, but I am wanting to know about the markets that you invest in. I m remember hearing that you you invest in Arizona and that if it's a creative deal, you'll buy it. No matter you guys want to know my buy box real fast? Everybody want to know my buy box? Yeah, I think this is a great question I'm asking. <laughs> it's a great question you're asking. Eric, uh, spotlight me and give me to the vibe board for a second and then switch my mic. All right. Um, here's my buy box. I have three things that I will buy. Okay. One, I will buy Maricopa County. Maricopa County is like Phoenix, Scottsdale, Chandler, Gilbert. Okay, Maricopa County, this is where I live. And I will buy creative deals, so sub two or seller finance. And I will also buy cash deals there and there only. I will also buy in Las Vegas. And I will buy creative only. Okay, this is single family, by the way, single family homes. Okay. As of, I'd say, three, four months ago, I have so many opportunity all over the country that I have bought way too many single family homes. We're on track to buy, I think, like 150 single family homes this year. And I don't want that many single family homes. It's too much. So what I did about three months ago is I said, I will only buy single family homes in these two markets. Okay. And we're buying probably, I'm going to guess, between six to 12 a month, depending on the month. Okay. My second buy box is the entire United States creative finance only single family homes. However, there's one big caveat. I will only buy those deals with my students. So if somebody sends me a deal in Detroit and they're not one of my students, I will say, no, I'm not interested in the deal. Okay, but if it is a student, I'll say, yep, let's do the deal. In fact, uh, I had Alejandro Alvarez today. I bought a deal in Greenville, uh, South Carolina today, not inside of my personal. This is my personal buy box, okay? This is where I personally want to buy. But here's the other caveat to this, is that I have to, my students have to remain my partner in these deals, okay? They bring the opportunity, they bring the house. Me and my team bring the money and cover the cost of the, the capital to pay for the down payment, the renovation, those types of things. And we stay 50-50 partner. So the student only brings the deal to the table and I bring all the money and I keep them on as a 50-50 partner of the deal. Now, very easily, I could just buy those deals, okay? Very easily, I could just buy those deals myself and remove my student from, from that situation. But I am buying deals with my students because I want my students to not worry about the capital requirements to get into some of these deals, like closing costs, furniture costs. I got to paint the house. Even though I got a zero down, 0% 0 seller finance deal, that doesn't mean I don't have closing costs and it doesn't mean I don't have renovations or maybe some new carpet. So me and my partners come in, bring the money to the table. We go, hey, we could have easily just paid you a $10,000 fee for bringing this deal to the table, but I really want my community to build wealth through owning real estate. So my second buy box is set up specifically for students only, all 50 states. We just bought a fourplex in Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska, and I bought a deal in Boston in the same day. So I will literally go coast to coast with my students. I'm funding the deals. I'm bringing the money to the table. And um, we're gobbling up a ton of deals with our community. Otherwise, my com community, what they were doing is they were just selling the deals and making a $10,000, $15,000 assignment fee. And they weren't really building a lot of wealth. They were getting rich, right? Um, like I have one student that did 38 sub two deals just this year. He's already at like $300,000 in assignments for the year. He's 22 years old. Um, he's, what are we, five months, six months through the year. So he'll probably end, end the year with $600,000. Great, that's a lot of cash but where's the wealth, right? You can be rich 
by doing a lot of assignments and wholesale, but you're nobody wealthy. You'll never meet anybody wealthy doing wholesale, just FYI. And take that to the bank. Tell everybody that I said that. Tell all your wholesale people out there on YouCubes, tell them that ain't nobody wealthy from wholesaling. Wealthy. They might be rich, but they're not wealthy. And the goal is wealth. Rich goes away. Wealth does not. Wealth sustains. The cash flow continues to come in. So I want my students to, of course, assign creative deals, assign cash deals. I, we teach wholesale just as much as anybody else. In fact, has anybody taken a wholesale mentorship and then come into my sub two community and go, Pace teaches more about wholesale than my actual wholesale mentor did? Any of my students say yes? Okay. I, I, I teach wholesale. I do more wholesale than most wholesale educators do. Okay. I just do a lot of deals. So that's my two first buy boxes. Let me tell you the third one. Eric, let's go back to the buy board. My third buy box is multifamily real estate, Sunbelt only. I'm not buying any of these in like North Dakota. Okay, I don't want any North Dakota or anything that's not in the Sunbelt. So Google the word Sunbelt. Okay, you could actually Google the Sunbelt Smile. If you Google the Sunbelt Smile, it'll show you a series of, of properties. In fact, here, well, let's, let's Google it real fast. I'll Google this for you guys really, really quickly. By the way, if you guys are trying to um, invest in sub two fund, there it is right there. But let's do a little search. Let's go Sunbelt Smile. Boom. Okay, you're going to see map. Well, that doesn't help me much, does it? I don't want to go to maps. That's the problem. I want to go to images. There we go. Sunbelt Smile. Okay, these are this is the Sunbelt states right there. Okay. Those are the Sunbelt states. Those are like obvious for me. The Sunbelt smile. Okay. I will buy multifamily in those areas. And that will go through two things. Okay. If a deal is a large deal, or I've got a big deal right now, a $20 million deal that we have under contract, and it's a seller finance deal. Okay, there's a broker that brought this deal to us and the seller's going to sell our finance, but he wants a down payment of scary number, $6 million. Some people are like, oh my gosh, I thought we were going to be able to do this with no money out of pocket. Well, a lot of deals you can, don't worry about this. This is a, high, this is a higher educated, more graduated strategy. So don't worry about it. But this um, $6 million, I got to go raise this money and partner with people. So this is why I created the sub to fund.com. So I can go and raise capital and put a fund together so that I can go and buy these bigger deals by raising capital from private, uh, for not from private money lenders, but investors. Okay. I actually have who in here is one of my investors in my sub two fund. Who in here is one of my investors? Say me. I'm, I'm a Julie. There she is. There you go, lady. Yep. There you go. I got a handful of Chris. There you go. Got a lot of people that are investors with me in sub two fund. Vina says, um, I will be next week. So a lot of you guys um, that are my um, investors in sub two fund, those are typically bigger projects that are seller finance type of deals. So let's go to the other one. So I have another deal right now in um, Lubbock, Texas. Okay, Lubbock, Texas. This is a 7 million, no, I'm sorry, $8.6 million multifamily deal. But the seller is only asking for $1 million as a down payment. This is not big enough for my fund. Doesn't make sense. So I wouldn't send that to my fund. It's not big enough. This is not a big enough deal for my fund. So I will buy this personally and I will raise that million, that million dollars from either private money lenders and I will refinance it out with my own money at some point. Okay, but these are smaller deals. So smaller multifamily deals in the Sunbelt Smile. Is this, has this been helpful? Is, does that answer your question at all? Did you remove her, Eric? Oh, Eric, bring Sabrina back up here. Oh, Eric. Sabrina, does that help answer the question? Yes, absolutely. Um, part of the reason why I asked is because um, I thought you were looking into Arizona, um, interested in Arizona uh, for multifamily. And I have a possible great deal I'm getting under contract mm -hmm. there. It's a huge multifamily um, for at minimum, I think 40% off um, the ARV. 
And um, I just sent the contract over to the broker today. I, so, do, I will not do a cash deal, just so you know. No, it's creative. It's creative. So oh, we really? were okay. able to negotiate. Yes, we were able to negotiate a um, refinance. What city um, is this? Agreement. This is in, um, it's in the state of Arizona. I don't want to say the state, the city, because it's not under contract yet. It's going to be easy to find. Oh, okay, um, cool. Um, but, yeah. So here's what I would do. If you want to do a deal with me in my multifamily stuff, um, send an email to invest at sub two fund.com and my team will underwrite it. And they'll tell you if it's a good deal, not a good deal. They'll tell you why it's a good deal, why it's not a good deal. And, um, I don't look at any of my deals anymore. Unfortunately, this is a sad moment, guys. This is, you guys, you know, there was a moment where Elon Musk stopped installing the, the t- tires on his cars, right? But what's so funny is so that. many people, they come to me and they go, Hey, will you look at my deal? I'm like, dude, I, I have to scale. I can't be sitting here in front of a computer. There you go. That's a better answer. He never did. Well, he did. He, he slept on the, the manufacturing floor. He, he worked at every single station. He saw all of those types of th- things. Okay. He did work in the shop. There comes a point in every business's career um, where you, or every business owner's career, they upgrade. And it's sad because you get addicted to doing the fun things of going out and meeting with sellers, but I don't do that anymore. Okay. I don't do that anymore. I now um, buy deals from my own company. My t- team is doing all the acquisitions. They're meeting the sellers and I'm my company's buying the deals, obviously. I then also buy a lot of deals from my sub two community. And then I also have a fund and inside of my fund. So the sub two fund, I actually have an acquisition person that does all of my underwriting, does all of my negotiating. I don't do that anymore because I have other businesses I have to create. So Sabrina, if you have an opportunity, please send it over to invest at sub two fund.com. You got it. I am sending that this evening. Cool. Now, um, thank you, Sabrina. I appreciate you. We'll, we'll talk thank to you Thank you soon. times a million. Of course. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you. Everyone write thank you, you to Pace in the group. <laughs> we'll give you guys, we'll give you way more. Sabrina, we'll give you more education here in this, the three days. My wife is actually here. She'll be here. We're going to pop her up here in about 15 minutes. My wife will give you more information in three days live than what you paid a wholesaler $8,500 to, to, to teach you. So strap in, hang out. We'll do some fun Q&A as well on Saturday and Sunday, a lot more Q&A. But let's bring on Thanks Benson. so much. Thank you, Sabrina. Benson, what you got, bro? You, you got that. Oh, Benson, here he is. How you doing, brother? You're muted. What is going on, my friend? How are you? I'm killing the game, man. Look at look at me. I'm all I'm all rowdied up right now. You are. I love this studio. Thank you, man. This is our uh, movie theater downstairs in my basement. This is one of the big reasons why we bought this house. I said we got to have a big studio that I never have to leave my house. So right now we're in a big, I don't know, thir- twenty feet by forty feet by twelve foot tall uh, room. It's awesome, and it has enough space for like a twenty person live audience. So next elephant challenge, I'll definitely have a live audience. Um, Benson. Very cool. You're the freaking man for coming in here and pouring so much into everybody. Guys, we've got 1400 people in the live zoom. And I don't know how many people we have on YouTube. 276. We got about 1600 people live right now. Okay. And we barely even started talking about the elephant challenge. I think on like Tuesday, we started promoting it and starting talking about it on Tuesday. I have such a limited schedule this summer because we're going to go live in Montana. My beautiful wife and I are going to go live in Montana for the, the summer. And so we're getting ready to get out of town. And I was like, man, I, I want to do the elephant challenge this month. I don't want to skip it. So we kind of slid it in on a Friday afternoon, a Saturday morning and a Sunday morning. So thank you guys so much for hanging tight with us. But Benson, last minute notice jumps in here and decides he wants to pour in some love and, and uh, help you guys out. So Benson is the owner of Privy. You guys can go to Privy by going to startwithprivy.com. If you don't have Privy, I'm going to tell you right now, the same thing I told you 45 minutes ago, the only thing I will try and sell you is Benson software. It's the only software we will ever use in the elephant challenge. We've been using it for a year. I would say, how many people have gotten a deal from using uh, Privy? in the last year? How many people? Give me a me in the side chat. How many people are loving? There you go. Boom, 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 boom. Me, 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 me. Okay. A lot of people love it. They're doing deals with it. And it is so fun to watch 
not only can I find a deal, but we can also find buyers. And Benson, what we're going to be doing actually today with my beautiful wife, she's going to be here in about 15, 20 minutes, is I'm going to have her find buyers by using Privy, by kind of doing some reverse engineering. And we're going to call some buyers today in Arizona and say, what are you looking for? How can we bring more value and more opportunities to you? And the homework for everybody today is to uh, download Privy and find two to three buyers before tomorrow's Elephant Challenge starts, okay? Um, Craig Robertson, everybody, I'm going to give you guys, pay attention to the Privy question. This is the number one Privy question. What's the difference between Privy, Batch Leads, and PropStream? Privy is not going to charge you $400, $600 a month and have all these erroneous charges and all these additional things. Guys, I use PropStream. I use Batch Leads. They're amazing. They have their uses. But when you're starting out, do we all agree? Give me an agree, a yes, a, a, an affirmation, a thumbs up if you prefer to spend as little money as humanly possible when you are starting out. Okay. I'm not going to come to you and tell you to get a CRM. In fact, if you have a CRM, delete it. You don't need a CRM for just starting out. Okay. That's why you'll never hear me talking about CRMs is because I don't think CRMs for, are for beginners. Okay. You guys should be using a Google spreadsheet and privy. Okay. The basics. All right. And, um, Privy is MLS data in most markets, soon to be all markets. And then they, the, the markets that they don't have MLS quality data, their data is as good as batch leads or prop stream. So there's no need for you to go to prop stream and Privy, just use Privy. Privy is the same data nationwide. So when somebody goes, Privy doesn't have MLS data in Alabama, well, neither does prop stream. Okay, so they have the same data in some of those markets that MLS is not direct access. When we first started out with Privy a year ago, Privy did not have direct to MLS data in Arizona, and now they do. They are expanding markets and doing all this stuff. By the way, anybody would prefer to never, okay, never, ever, ever, ever become a licensed real estate agent? That's me. I'm going to raise both hands, by the way. Guilty as charged. I never want to be a licensed real estate agent. Okay. If I need a licensed real estate agent, I have a, my wife is that. Okay. However, if you want MLS data, you have to become an agent or partner with an agent. Or when Privy got launched, Privy says, we're going to eliminate the need for you to have MLS quality data without a license. We're gonna, you're, you're, you now don't need a license to get MLS quality data, okay? And Molly, my head of operations, my wife all tell me that they don't use the MLS anymore, okay? They use Privy because Privy is easier to use for investors. How many agents in here feel the same way about Privy that you're using Privy? You're like, my Privy is actually better than my MLS. Give me some me's in the side chat so people know that Privy is not going to leave them hang in. Okay. Patty says, I was wondering about that. I know. I know what you're wondering before you wonder it. I've been doing this elephant challenge for a year. I know the I know the questions that are popping up in your mind. Yep. Privy is amazing. What we're going to be doing is today, Privy and my wife, Laura Morby, she's going to be coming up here in about seven minutes. Uh, my Privy code, I think it's PACE. I think you get a discount. So go to uh, startwithprivy.com. Oh, this is a great question. Matthew Wong says, what's the difference between Privy agent and investor if we do have our agent license? How does that benefit them? Yeah, so the MLSs are pretty strict about which data we can show and not show inside of our system. So if you're a licensed agent, you enter your agent ID when you register. And then we're able to show you a few things that are, I guess, private. So number one, private remarks. Those are the remarks that agents get to see when they look at each other's listings. So they can see things like mm -hmm. um, houses under contract, um, taking backup offers. Or you might say, you know, um, submit all offers by one o'clock by Friday. We'll have an offer selected by Monday. So things like that that are helpful, you can see those things. Number two, you get to see the contact information for the agents, phone numbers, email addresses, office names, um, stuff like that. So that's also for licensed people. And then if you are a practicing agent and you work with clients, you can actually set them up to get automated email alerts on their deals that match their specific deal criteria. 
So you could set up an email alert for Joe Homebuyer and one for Susie, I buy homes and, and they can get alerts in their email boxes. And you are the ones you are, you get the benefit of not having to search for those manually. Love it. Absolutely love it. Now, guys, a lot of the cool little bonuses that we're going to do, I'm going to drop a bomb on you. This is going to seem anti-pace because everybody considers me the biggest giver um, in the real estate industry, but I'm going to drop a bomb on you. The most challenging thing I've ever had to do in real estate is help people that are non-action takers. Okay. When I first started out helping people at a high level, meaning really intensely, I was driving people around in my car. And I realized that after like six months of driving people around in my car, oh, they can't hear me. Oh yeah, they can. He says, can't really hear you. It's always somebody on a freaking Android in New Jersey that has a job as an engineer. Guys, you can hear me. Okay. Yes. So the, the people that um, I would help for free, the people that had never spent a dollar, like the YouTube crowd, the free, fa- they've only, they're free Facebook groups, they're going to free RIAs, they're going to, um, you know, only to YouTube. They've never invested a single dollar in anything. Those are the people that I feel like lack commitment. And so today what's going to happen is I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to pair you up with some of my student leaders. We gave you guys a list of them. We're going to give you guys their contact information and a way for them to give you some additional Q&A and some things like that. But that list only goes to people that have privy. Why? Think about that. Do you think that I, as somebody who's one of these student leaders, wants to be on a Q&A with you that said you have all these questions and, you're, and they go, okay, well, let's pull up in your privy and I'll show you this, this, and this. And you go, oh, I didn't get privy. Would you, be, would you be willing to walk people through today yourself? Ask, answer this question. Would you be willing to walk people through that the only software you will literally use in this entire challenge for an entire year is Privy? Yet, I'm going to put you in touch with re- people that are resourceful, that have been doing hundreds of deals. You're going to have direct access to my community members, and y'all ain't taking action. Would you give me a yes or a no? Would you be willing to be that person that is the one that's answering the phone calls to the, the people who are just sitting there asking questions, have never literally taken any answers? There's always going to be a yes. A so Holly's going to say yes. No, you won't. After doing it for a year, you realize that some people can't be helped, hmm. at least from a tactical standpoint. They can't be helped from a mechanical standpoint. They need to go and work on their mindset and then they can come back and I can help them with their tactical and their mechanical stuff. But what happens is there are a lot of people that don't believe in themselves. So there's this analogy I use. If I'm a lifeguard and there's two people out in the ocean drowning, one of them is swimming away from me and one of them is swimming towards me, which one of them am I going to save first? Which one are you going to save first? The one swimming away from you or the one swimming towards you? Okay. You're going, to save, you're going to save your energy to make sure you have a guaranteed win with the person that is swimming towards you. They are trying, they are attempting. And then once you're successful with that person, you can then go and hopefully chase down the person that's swimming away from you. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're guaranteeing success. And the way that you do that is by working with people who are committed. Okay. Okay. Um, So go to startwithprivy.com forward slash pace, or just go to startwithprivy.com and then use the code pace or Laura or whatever. It does not matter. Uh, Startwithprivy.com. And what we'll be doing is everybody that signs up with Privy, you're going to get two things. You're going to get the side chat, everybody's contact information from the whole entire elephant challenge. That's number one. Number two is you'll be getting um, access and tied in with community leaders for the rest of the challenge. So we'll be pairing you guys up with teams Uh, So that on day two and day three, you guys have people to reach out to. The code is PACE, P-A-C-E, okay? P-A-C-E. When you register the, uh, I did not know this. When you register with the password PACE, it will say PACE loves you after you sign up. That's freaking hilarious. That's awesome. Okay, so Benson, Mm -hmm. um, before we bring Laura up here, would you mind telling me from a high level, what does Privy do and why should I have Privy? Privy is your local market education source. So part of the problem with the real estate business is that so many educators, so many people out there are so focused on lead generation that they do not teach what a darn deal is. 
how do you comp a property out? How do you know what a deal is in your target market? There is no book, podcast, Pace, Jamil, anybody out there who's going to be able to tell you what a deal is today in Dallas, Texas, compared to Tampa, compared to uh, Philadelphia. And especially in a shifting market, knowing your local market and knowing what a, and what investors are buying properties for, knowing what they're selling them for, knowing what percentage of ARV they're buying them at. Who are those people? Who are the buyers? Laura is going to talk to some here in a bit. Who are the agents that are active in those markets? Where should you be focusing your valuable time and effort? All that local market information and education isn't available from anywhere else but Privy. This is one of the main things that I think that we don't look at enough because when we hear Privy and we're thinking of all these platforms, we're thinking about data. Well, data is useless if it's just sitting in a spreadsheet on your computer. You need actionable information that you can look at that will help you make confident decisions. And so you take action. That's what Privy really is a game changer for. It will give you valuable information that will help you take action, that will help you make a confident decision so you're not sitting on the sidelines anymore. Love it. Absolutely love it. So here's what we're going to be doing. Eric, go take me back to the vibe board, please, and, and highlight my screen for uh, just a second. You can pin me, spotlight me, whatever you want to do. All right. So um, guys, here's what we're going to be doing. We talked about this, but I want to make sure that we cover this now that Benson is here. Benson, this is what we're going to be doing today. Okay, this is our this is our cheat sheet for accomplishing um, a very specific set of goals. So my my beautiful wife Laura, she's coming in here shortly. I'd say in about two minutes, and we're going to be going through what a beginner needs, in my opinion. Now, if you guys understood what Sabrina said earlier, okay, Sabrina was saying, um, "Hey, oh Eric, you're good at this. I like this. Look at Eric trying to figure this out, guys." Yeah. Go to, go to, no, it's not all right. Go to my screen and then say spotlight. There you go. Er, guys, Eric, give Eric some love. He's been figuring out. Hey, there's this, hey, Eric, there's this thing called Zoom. Did you know it exists? I'm not a professional Zoom person. He's not a Zoomer, he says. He's a, bo he's a boomer. <laughs> you, you would guess he's a boomer, but he's not a Zoomer. Okay. He's acting like a boomer right now. Okay. So um, we're going to be going through primarily for beginners. This elephant challenge is going to be primarily for beginners. People have not done a single deal or people have maybe done one or two deals. My wife and Benson are going to try and do some reverse engineering on where are the buyers? Let's find a couple of buyers and let's find um, some people that have recently fixed and flipped. Is that pretty easy to find, Benson? Oh yeah. It's the easiest way I know of. Okay, cool. So Privy is going to help us find buyers. Now, my wife, just so you know, Privy is on my desktop. So if you guys, if you go to my Google Chrome, sweetheart, I'm sure you're listening to me right now. You can go and click on Privy. It should log you in pretty easily. So I'd get ready and set up for that. Um, we're then going to do market research. What are these buyers that we're going to find? What are they buying? Are they buying three bed, two bath houses? Are they buying two bed, one baths? Or what are they okay with? And then what we're going to do today is my wife and hopefully myself, maybe my wife just wants to do it herself. I don't know. She's kind of a gangster. We're going to try and find two to three buyers today. And that is the homework for everybody before we have elephant challenge date number two tomorrow. And we do new activities and move on to the next step, which would be active, actually finding deals for these buyers. Now, if you guys remember going back to what Sabrina said, what did she do? Okay. Sabrina came up and um, by the way, kudos to Sabrina for telling us exactly what happened to her. It takes a little bit of courage to say you, you, you failed and um, failure is a good thing because you learn from it. That's the best thing is you have to fail in order to, to succeed. Here's a seller lives in a home, right? This is what most wholesalers are doing. Most wholesalers are going to the homeowner or let's say to the agent. This is what happened with uh, Sabrina. She actually went to an agent um, in some ways, even a little bit worse because you now will never be able to do a deal with that agent again because you've soured that relationship. What you did is Sabrina went to the, whole, the agent and said, I can buy this deal. This agent and her got into a contract. By the way, on day number two, guys, we will go through how to fill out a contract. Does everybody want me to walk through and how to fill out a contract on day number two? Give me a yes. 
We will be giving you guys a $4,000 contract. It's a wholesale contract and an assignment contract. We will be giving that to you guys tomorrow. And we will be walking through exactly how to fill that out, make it easy for you guys, change your life. I promise you, we'll make your life really easy. Okay, tactical, mechanical. We ain't doing no mindset stuff here today, guys. We're gonna be doing tactical, mechanical stuff, helping you guys out, all right? So here's what happens with Sabrina, okay? Heaven bless you, Eric, for having to deal with me on a live. I love this. So on day two, we'll go through the contract, but here's what happened with Sabrina. She, okay, she goes and signs a contract with this agent. She then takes this contract, I believe, and she sends it to a title company. And she does what we call opens escrow. Now, the word opens escrow means nothing more than starts the transaction, okay? She started the transaction. Now, what Sabrina did is she says, okay, my contract says I have a 10-day inspection period, which means I have 10 days to try and find a buyer and then my buyer decides to buy my contract and they put in my EMD, my earnest money deposit. We'll, we'll talk about this on day number three, okay? So on day number three, we'll talk about that, but here's the problem. Sabrina started sending her this, con she started sending out this address. Let's say it's 123 Main Street. She started sending out this address to potential buyers and they all said, no, you, you got this price way too high. This is not a deal. This, this contract that you got is actually not a deal. And essentially what Sabrina had to do is Sabrina had to go back to the agent, tail between her legs and say, I have to cancel this contract. Now, sadly, this agent right here actually turned down another contract that was a more legitimate buyer because they are actually had another buyer in line. And Sabrina felt really bad. Guys, the reason why this happened is because she is doing what I call reverse wholesaling. She's doing it the opposite way. The way you should be doing wholesaling is you should be finding deals for a specific buyer. Imagine if we did this a different way. And this is what we're gonna teach in this specific elephant challenge. Let's say that she, instead of going um, to the sellers first, okay? What if Sabrina says, all right, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find a buyer. I'm gonna see what they're buying. I'm gonna see what they're actively doing. I'm gonna look at some of their flips. I'm gonna see what tile they choose. I'm gonna see who their lender is. My wife will even show you how to find out who their private money lenders are. You guys wanna find who private money lenders are? My wife will show you that between probably today, maybe tomorrow. Okay. So what you should be doing is as a wholesaler, you should be going, all right, I got to, I, I do got to find sellers, right? Or maybe agents, depending on which way you want to go. But what I really need is I need to know who my customers are. I need to know who is actually buying. I need to find very, like a lot of high traffic areas. Okay. We'll go through that today. What market should I choose? And I want to find a list of buyers, okay? These people that say, hey, I'm actively buying, I'm actively flipping, I'm act actively building my portfolio. And you go to them and you say, what do you want? What projects, what type of houses do you want me to look for? And once you know this knowledge, right? This amazing information, you can then use that information and start reaching out to specific homeowners, specific agents, telling people this is what I'm looking for and this is the price point that I'm looking for it in. So, without further ado, let's bring on my beautiful wife, Laura Morby. Eric's like, what do I do? How do I do that? Oh my gosh, I don't know how to do that. Eric's losing his mind right now. Do you know how to do that, Eric? I did it. I, I know, she's up here. Let's go to, let's go to, uh, uh, spotlight my wife or add spotlight. Let's spotlight all three of us. Let's bring on Benson as well. Thank you, brother. Laura Morby. Welcome to the stage, right. Laura Morby. Guys, if you don't Laura. follow her on YouTube or on Instagram, please do so. Um, somebody got her pregnant. I'm not sure who it is, but she's pregnant right now. I don't know. Keeps happening. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps happening. You know, what happens is you get you do deals and magic happens. You just start making babies. It's crazy. 
Mm -hmm. Sweetheart, how are you doing? Doing great. Really excited to be here. Happy. Are to be you here. excited to go to Montana? Yeah. That's all, that's all I get out of you. Have you guys been watching the Montana shows? You have to go watch Yellowstone. Um, you have to go and watch 1923, 1983. Oh, all the backstories. You're going to love it. They're oh, so yeah. good. Those are great stories. We may or may not have decorated Pace's office because of Yellowstone, a specific yeah. way. We changed our last name from Morby to Dutton, just so you guys know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to take it simple. Babe, you, did you see my homework and what we're trying to accomplish today for everybody? We are going to find cash buyers. Okay. Can we do that today? You feel excited about it? I could do that for you in 10 minutes, but we will go slow so everyone can do it with us. Guys, do, do we prefer Laura to go slow today or do we want to just go so fast that some people just, we go too fast? So type in slow or fast. Wow, okay. there's a lot of slow. Okay, come on. The people that are fast, you got y'all should just tune out. We're going to take an hour to do something that takes 10 minutes, just so you guys know. Slow, please. Really slow. They said crock pot slow. Dang, I feel like some crock pot chicken right now. I oh, do yeah. have to tell everyone that I have an ultrasound to see the gender of our child at 630. So I can't go that slow. Not crock oh, pot slow. Are you are we gonna find out the gender tonight? Yeah, it's 630. It's in the calendar, the family calendar, the sub two okay. family calendar. So we're gonna find out tonight. That's what we're deciding right now is on a live. Yeah. We're not gonna hide it and then like do a gender reveal. No. You wanna find out the baby tonight? Yeah. You I got my palms are sweaty. Why? <laughs> Think about this. Why? Literally, I don't know. That's a big thing to find out. Yeah. I mean, we should be used to it. We keep having babies. So I get, I'll make a joke. That's kind of true, but, um, some people tune out. There's always, there's always like a lady that just can't handle some of my jokes, <laughs> but I heard that if you only do missionary, you only have daughters. And so that's our problem. We're only doing missionary guys. <laughs> it's cause you're Mormon. Can you confirm or deny this Laura? It's cause you're Mormon. Cause I'm Mormon. We do only yeah. do missionary. I actually put my name badge on as uh, from being a missionary and just Mormon missionary, missionary style. Yeah. Missionary style pace Morby. He's joking. We don't only do it in missionary, but yeah. <laughs> position matters for gender. My mom had 12 kids. She told me that position does matter. Did my mom tell you what position gave boys or girls? Did my mom tell you that? Um, your mom did not tell me that, but your mom probably oh, this isn't something you, you and your, you and your, my mom are talking about. No, definitely not. I've heard some funny sex stuff from your mom, but not that often. Over the past 15 it. years, if she says something, it's usually a little bit out of left field and it's funny. So I love it. I love it. And Zen, do you feel like three is a crowd right now? <laughs> no, this is like being on a, a like a romantic comedy show. Like it's fun. <laughs> yeah, this is good. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna, I like it when my wife hangs out. Does everybody like it when my wife hangs out? Sebastian says, move on, please. Seb Sebastian, please, you can just leave. <laughs> just leave, man. If you don't want to hang out and have a little chuckle every once in a while, just leave. <laughs> go and do, go do what other people do. Go pay somebody 10 grand to go to a class. Go do that. Just leave. <laughs> We're all trying to have fun on a Friday night and you're, and you are just, you cannot just enjoy something for 45 seconds. Okay. Maybe he hasn't been laid in a while. So, oh, sad. my wife had to bring the gauntlet. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Burn. Well, you don't to want to hear about other people doing it when you haven't done it in a while. What, so. it, what else do we want to make money for? I legit I have to ask the question what else is people trying to make money for? Buy a bigger house and nicer car and all that kind of stuff. You're trying to eat better food, go on better experiences, and have more sex. That's it. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. Uh, all I right. Think let's you do should it. still that make that shirt for for sub two. That's like, um, get checks. You know, no drama or like no exes. All like good sex. I don't know. Yes. I'll send it to you. I like it. So just you know, good lifestyle stuff. Here we are. We're not. You said you we weren't going to talk about mindset stuff, but we're just like, hey, go have go to trips. Get a nice house. 
Do yes. It more. And, and if you can't have a joke every once in a while, then you probably are unhappy in a lot of other areas of your life. And I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I feel true. sorry for you. If you can't laugh every once in a while, and you can't even laugh on a Friday night during a live that people are doing for you for free and you got to get all uptight. Y'all probably unhappy in like 85 other areas of your life. Okay. So let's do it. Let's I mean, it. let's get the to other work. way. Yeah. The other yeah way. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. That's what we should say. Um, all right. So what do we do? We're going to, we're going to start up a privy. Let's, let's do this. Uh, Laura, right. we're choosing Arizona as our market. All right, let's go. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you something as we pull this up. I'm going to, I'm going to shut up a little bit, okay, as we, we do this. I will shut up a little bit more. My wife and Benson will take over a little bit more, but I want to guide the conversation because I know what people are going to ask and what they're worried about. There's a lot of people in here right now that are wondering, what market should I do? Anybody in here is curious, what market should I start with? Okay, a lot of yeses. Okay. Let me tell you right now. That. What question. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Okay. Start local. If you are, unless you're in North Dakota or Wyoming or some of the, the states that don't really have any activity going on, don't start in those areas. Start with areas that have a lot of activity. And if there's a lot of activities in your backyard, then just start in your backyard. Okay. Um, we buy in all 50 states. I will be buy in all 50 states as long as I'm partnering with pe people. Boise is amazing. Dallas is unbelievable. We own a lot in, in Dallas. Um, you're in Iowa. Iowa is amazing. Okay. If you're in South Africa, move to America. Okay. I see the South Africans. Puerto Rico is an amazing market. Tons of seller finance opportunities in Puerto Rico. In fact, it's like 80% of transactions that happen in Puerto Rico are seller finance. Okay. So did you, I don't know if you knew that Laura and Benson, did you know that like 80% of transactions in Puerto Rico are seller finance? Well, yeah, that's how things were done. I mean, this whole thing that you think that in order to buy a house, you have to go get a traditional mortgage, you know, funded by the federal reserve is new, you know, sellers are used to, Hey, you want to buy my house? This is what I want. I'll accept payments. Sellers are yes. used to being the banks. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So here we go. Here's what I would do guys. Let's take three minutes. I'm going to give you guys some guidance. I want everybody at the end of these three minutes to say, this is the market I'm in. If you see a lot of blue on this map, look at the map on the screen. If you see a lot of blue on this map and it's in your backyard, that's where you should start. Yeah. Okay. If you have a lot of blue in your backyard on this map, that means there's a lot of activity. Yellow means there's less activity. Red means there's, what is it? Red means, oh no, that's MLS data. I'm sorry. Yep. The, right now, this first view is just where we have that direct to MLS data. Already. Laura, zoom in just a little bit on this map. I want to see the, the areas where there's a little bit more activity. Okay. And you guys will, you guys will see that um, Privy will show you guys where most of the activity is on this map. So if you guys have Privy, um, this is pretty simple. But what I would do is I would choose your own backyard. And of course, Privy, every time we do the elephant challenge, it slows down a little bit, which is a good thing because it means there's a lot of people taking action. I love this. <laughs> so if you are an action taker, you're on Privy, this is awesome. It means you're, you're, you're taking action and you're here. What market, okay, what market do I want to be in? I want to be in a market that has activity in it, okay? I want to be in a market that has activity. I, the Actually, second thing that I want, can, I want to make one more suggestion. Here. Yeah, go ahead. It will help make it a little bit more clear. So that button at the top, Laura, that says fix and flip. Mm -hmm. If you click that, that actually plots on the map, uh, the fix and flip one. There you go. Sorry, there. I just have some Zoom stuff in the way. Just getting it out of my, my, there you my go. area. That will actually plot on the map where all the investment activity is. And then you can choose, use the blue. Oh, my app. word direct you to where those areas are at. So like there you said, we go. Okay. So if you got areas with big numbers, that's where a lot of activity is happening, right? Yep. Yes, sir. So go guys, to if you're in Montana, Montana no yeah. Eastern Montana. Yeah. And same, look at South Dakota. Ain't nobody doing deals in South Dakota. Yeah. Okay, so Sioux Falls, man, there ain't nothing happening there. So guys choose a market where there's a lot of activity. This is where you can see there's a lot of activity. Now, Laura, what market do you think we should choose? I think we should choose Arizona because it's our own market and we buy there already. And I think also because it's early, earlier in the afternoon that if we call some buyers today 
it'll be super easy. Alex, how did we get here? We clicked on the button that says fix and flip at the very top. See the button that says fix and flip. It's currently highlighted blue. She clicked on that button. You blinked. Okay. Privy, privy yeah. can be a business write-off. Yes, guys. Privy is a business write-off. So if you are already certain of where, what market you're going to start in, I want to see in the side chat, who is starting in what market? Tell me. I want to see it in the side chat. 1,300 people. I want to see 1,300 comments. Okay. Now, one thing that will also help you. Thank you. Keep going, guys. Keep going. I'm, I'm looking at all of them. I'm staring at the, the chat. It'll help me reference and answer some questions a little bit later in the live today. Um, one thing that I want to point out to you is that when you guys get paired in with some of the sub two leaders tonight, after we're all done, what we're going to do is everybody that is a privy uh, client, somebody that's on the privy list, we're going to send you out a PDF. Okay. And that PDF is going to have sub two students uh, contact information. You guys are going to join their teams. And if you don't know your market, I can tell you very quickly that one of the leaders that you pair in with will tell you what market is working best for them. Okay. So I would choose your market right now. Let's get to work. Let's do some of the steps that Laura's doing. By the way, it is going to be a little slow today because we have 1,300 people taking action all simultaneously. And what I like about it is when we do this is it forces us to slow down just a little bit. And that's a good thing. So what would be our next step if I wanted to find a buyer that has maybe bought a property, flipped it in the last, I don't know, six months? How would this we is, do that? So we already did the first step and you can see how incredibly easy Benson has made this for everybody. So by clicking on the fix and flip button, these are all of the fix and flips that have been done. If you look here, Phoenix has a massive bubble, 2561. So it's a good thing that we're starting here. But we can just go ahead and go on in, click on this. We can go to list. It might be a little slow, right, Benson? Yeah, it can be. Um just because everyone's in here right now, but I can also, mm -hmm. let's go into Arcadia Light. Let's go call some some fancy boys. Fancy boys. Is that who lives there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're flipping in Arcadia, even Arcadia Light, then sure. Yeah. You, you yeah. like to spend some money, but we don't have to even do that. We'll go a couple other spots too. Oh, looks like Pace is walking to me. Yeah. Maybe you go back out one more little notch with your your um mouse there. You want that loading button to come. Can you click the the map view again, please, Laura? Sure. I'm gonna zoom in just a tad. What I'm getting what I wanted it to do is for that load button to work. There, there we, we go. go. Okay, so this pulled up this house and it's a, looks like it's a condo or a town home. And if we click on it, it will open it up. So this one just sold March, 2023. It's a two bedroom, two bath, 1040 square feet. And it was a flip. And the reason why this is so cool is Privy will automatically figure out if it was bought and sold for a certain percentage different of price. So that will usually tell you that someone bought it for a low price, put some money into it and then fixed it up and sold it for more. So the easiest way to see who did this is we're gonna scroll down, not to comparables. So we've got right here in property history, so it looks like you can see this bought and sold right here. So in 2022, the buyer, which was NCR Investments LLC, bought this house for 270,000. And that was in September of last year. In March of this year, they sold it for 363. So it'll show you NCR bought it, NCR sold it. And that right there, is an active cash buyer who is actively fix and flipping. Now, when we were zoomed out on that bird's eye view of Phoenix, there was like 2,500 of these. And so 
You can pick but, one, you can pick three. They're super easy. So now that we have this. Let's, 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 pick, let's just focus on that just for a second, okay? Sure. Everybody, do you realize what she just did? She just showed you how to find a buyer. This is an active buyer. This is what Privy is really, really good at. You don't need MLS. We found a buyer. Yeah. Now, how many of you guys will need buyers when you run this business? Give me a yes in the comments or me. How long did it take Laura to find a buyer and figure out that it was a buyer? How long did it take her? And she's doing it slowly, by the way. Okay. So is there any reason why you guys should be out there finding deals without having a handful of buyers that you've become friendly with? Any reason? Is there any reason you should be calling sellers and negotiating with agents and calling sellers and trying to negotiate on contracts, but you've never spoken to a customer that's going to buy this? By the way, Christian says, geez, this is legit. Guys, if you're enjoying this and you're getting value today, please say me or say value or say Laura's hot. I'm okay with people telling my wife that she's hot. You don't drive a Porsche and leave it in the garage. You let people compliment your Porsche. You know what I'm saying? You're a nut. I, I do want to take like a quick side note that how I usually see people try to find cash buyers. And even after I'll show people this, they will go straight to Facebook. They'll go to some investor group and they'll say, is anyone buying in Phoenix? Is anyone buying in Arcadia Light? And then the next thing that people come to me, they won't tell me that they're doing this. They'll, they they will they, they'll pretend like they're doing this, but they're really going to Facebook and guess who's responding to them in those message boards and wholesalers. Facebook. wholesalers. So then they come to me and their next question is, how can I trust this person? How do I oh know that they're actually a buyer? Gosh. Can I, and can I, can I focus on this for just a second? Please. Kim, I would Kim, love we're going to, Kim, really we're going to go back and do this again, just so you know, guys know. Okay. By the way, Jason says, holy cow, I get it. Guys, do you now see why we do this elephant challenge? Just go really slow, okay? We're going to show how you, guys, we will show you how we contact the buyers in just a minute, but we want to show you why this is so incredibly important, okay? Um, Laura, unshare your screen. Eric, give me full spotlight, please. I want to go to the vibe board for just a second and focus on what Laura just talked about for just a moment, okay? So um, when you're in this business, Laura is so right about this, okay? Here's what's gonna happen, okay? You're gonna have a seller that's in a house, obviously, and we're gonna show you guys how to find these sellers on day two and day three, okay? Just don't worry about that, we're gonna get there, okay? But you're gonna have a seller. And when you're working in Privy, you're typically gonna work with agents that are representing sellers, right? This is what Privy's really good at is on-market deals, where agents are representing these sellers, okay? So we are gonna communicate with agents on day two and day three, but here's an investor or what we wanna call wholesaler, WS, somebody who's gonna wholesale the deal. Now, how do I determine whether I'm a wholesaler or not? You are a wholesaler if you currently don't wanna flip a house and you don't wanna own a house, you just wanna get a check. So if you are somebody who's like, I just want to get a deal finding check. I want to get, a, I want to get a, an assignment. I just want to get paid for finding a deal. I want you to type in the side chat, bird dog. Type in bird dog in the side chat. Type in bird dog in the side chat. Give me bird dog in the side chat. I want to see bird dog. You just want to be a bird dog. You want to find a deal, sell that deal to somebody else. You want to make 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, whatever. I'm currently paying a bird dog right now on a multifamily deal, $150,000 on one deal. That person doesn't want to own a multifamily deal because they're not ready for it yet, right? They don't have teams, processes, confidence. They just know I can go find a deal because I know Pace is a buyer and they're just bird dogging, getting a check. So how many people type in bird dog? I want to see bird dog in the side chat, seeing a lot of them. Okay. So you, that what I'm about to show you is really important to you. You need to understand what Laura just talked about. It's one of the most important things you will ever hear about wholesale. Okay. Here you go. So wholesalers, what they do is they go and learn from like Sabrina. I'm, I'm sorry, Sabrina, I'm picking on you. You go and pay a $10,000 per uh, wholesale teacher. They teach you to reach out to agents and go get contracts first, okay? They go and teach you to get a contract first. And what happens is that when you go get this contract, you don't have a buyer and you also don't know if this is a deal or not. 
Okay, so here's what you then do. You then go, go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I have a deal and the deal, I have 10 days to sell the deal. And instead of knowing what Laura just gave you, Laura taught you how to find a real buyer in two minutes. That value, guys, would have made Sabrina avoid what she went through. Sabrina would have completely uh, um, uh, avoided everything that she went through. She would have been able to know that it was a deal before she got it under contract. Here's a couple of things here. Let's go back to the vibe board, Eric. So here's what people are doing that are learning the wrong way. Okay, they are not going to buyers. They're going to where they think buyers are because here's what you see. You go into Facebook. Okay, so let's erase this for just a second. Sorry, guys, I gotta, let me erase some of this stuff so we can make this really simple and I can, man, I've been cranking. This vibe board's really worth freaking $10,000, huh? Anybody else happy I spent $10,000 on this bad boy? Holy moly. I think okay, so awesome. here's what this process looks like. What you think you're doing by going to, to Facebook, okay, and you're saying, where are my buyers? Like Laura just said, you're going to have so many people posing as buyers. They are lying to you. These people are called co-wholesalers. Now, do I have a problem with people that are co-wholesaling? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. No way. No, I just prefer when they tell me who they are. I want to know who you are. I want to know, hey, for example, Laura and I sold, I don't know, remember Juan Ramos? Mm -hmm. we, had a, we had a gentleman, we sold, I don't know, probably 15, 20 deals from, for, for Juan Ramos to our buyers. And we co-wholesaled those deals all like in two months we made, I, I think we made, we had a multifamily deal and a couple of other deals. I think we made like 200 grand co-wholesaling deals for Juan Ramos. Yep. The difference was I told Juan, I'm not the buyer. I'm going to make money on finding a buyer for you. And I'm going to make sure you get the number that you're looking for. Okay. You didn't Clarity. care. You didn't there care. There you go. Communication. Yeah. Okay. Most people in these Facebook groups that are saying I'm a buyer are lying to you. If you simply ask them, show me your LLC that is buying the properties, guess what? Most of them would just ghost you because they are not actually buying properties. And this is the wrong way of doing it. This is what I love about Jamil and, Co uh, and what he does at Keegley is he very literally tells you, I'm not the buyer. I'm going to find a buyer for you. And I'm going to get paid for finding that buyer. Okay. So what happens is because you, the wholesaler, got a deal under contract, you only have now 10 days to find a buyer, you very quickly with anxiety go to another wholesaler. And that other wholesaler who has actually learned what Laura taught you has access to a group of buyers. They then go to their group of buyers and they say, hey, who wants to buy this deal over here? Let's say you get this property under contract for $100,000. Your co-wholesaler or the second person in line, they go and sell it for $120,000. Well, guess what? They're in control. They're in control of the communication. They're in control of what's going on. And they could also tell you, this has happened to us a bunch of times. They can tell you, oh man, I, I found a buyer at 110. Would you take 105? And most of the time, I see this all the time, Okay, this happened to Joey. Oh my gosh, Joey, I love her. Joey Strange this is a great, great story. She tells me, she calls me, this is on one of the Zooms in our sub two community. She says, Pace, I, I've got a contract at 100,000 and I've got a guy saying he's a buyer and he'll only give me 106. And I'm like, uh, I don't know, Joey. It doesn't, it seems like a really good deal. That's a really low thing. You should be shooting for like 120. And she says, well, he says he's a real buyer. I go, I, I feel like he's another wholesaler. I feel like he's another wholesaler. And you already know where I'm heading with this. I said, where did you find him? She says, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Joey, you just got duped. You got duped. The guy is going to make thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 on you. She's like, no, 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 I trust him. I trust him. Well, guess what? Deal closes. She sees the settlement statement and she finds out he made $13,000 on top of her six 
So she's like, the whole time he was lying to me that he was the buyer. I was asking him updates. What's going on with the lender? When's the thing closing? What's going on? And he would never shoot me straight. And I'm like, Joey, it's because he had to go to his actual buyer and ask the questions to then get the, the answers and give them to you. So it would take him, a, it, there was a delay. This is why you were frustrated during the whole entire process is because there was no chain of communication and he was lying to you the entire time. So guys, I love co-wholesaling. We've co-wholesaled, I don't know, probably a good 200 deals in our, our career. I love co-wholesaling. There's entire business models that focus just on co-wholesaling. But work with people that are being honest with you and saying, I'm not the buyer, but I can help you find a buyer if you want to do 50-50 or 70-30 or 60-40. Work out an agreement that makes sense for both parties. But what Laura is telling you is how to find the actual buyer so you can avoid going through these people right here in the middle if you want to make all the 120. She's, she's showing you how to get directly to the buyer in a matter of a couple of minutes. Do you see how valuable this is to show you exactly how easy this is? Give her a thank you in the side chat. And what we'll do is she'll then show you how to do it one more time, okay? Because we all need to have a refresher. Laura, they want to go through, people want to have steps, just so you know. So you got to go step one, X, Y, and Z. Step two, PDQ. Right. And then what we'll do is once you find another buyer, I would do this again, or maybe go and reverse engine, do this one again, the same one, or do a different property. If you choose to do so, you do what you want to do. And then we'll show people how to find the contact information and let's throw a script together and let's call some buyers. What do you guys say? Yes. I want to call right. right now. Okay. Well, we're you getting gotta, you ahead gotta... of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's keep going. Can I keep going? No, show them how you found this again. There's a lot of people, you did it so fast. They want to see how you found that house again. One more time. I would love to. Okay, everybody. Okay. And Eric, you got to give her a highlight. Screen. I'm good. I got it. Or do replace spotlight. Okay, I'm there good. we go. I got it. Okay, so I'm going to get out of this and I'm going to go find us a different one. So I'm going to zoom out. See what else I get. Oh my gosh, 940. Do I want to call that person? Probably not. Okay, let's look at this one. So sold for 620. It sold. Is that is that right? Seven days ago? Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, could be. Okay, so when you click on this again, here actually I'm just gonna start from scratch, okay? Everyone. Not my list, sorry. I'm gonna go back home. Or you're going to want to click the uh, the globe on the bottom left hand corner. Okay. That's the, um, the that's there we go. Base. Okay. So when you log into Privy, this is what it's going to look like. And what you're going to want to do, we're looking for a cash buyer. So you want someone who's actually doing deals. So we're going to go right up here, just a click of a button. If you guys aren't watching me and you aren't paying attention or you're currently on the toilet and you set your phone on the counter, you're not gonna see this, okay? You have to watch, because it's this easy. It's literally a one button push. We're gonna click on fix and flip. That means we're looking for people who are fix and flipping. And I already pulled one up in Phoenix, 1.58 million, too much. Let's go to one that's a little bit less. It literally pulls up 2,500 fix and flips. Laura, why would you choose to do one at a lower price point? What advantage does a beginner have going after lower price points? I mean, when you're dealing with people that will happily fix and flip million dollar plus exits, they are a little bit more of a savvy investor. Um, and it's just a different ball game. So if this, if you guys are trying to get your first deal, just go sub 750, you know? I mean, if you're in California, go, you know, if you want to do a million, that's fine. <laughs> but, you know, for us, I feel like being around 750 or less is just your run of the mill flipper. So it's definitely an educated investor, but it's not someone who you're going to be shaking in your boots before you call them. In my opinion, you guys can do whatever you want, though. If you guys have really big cojones, then go ahead and call whatever you want. So. And just so you guys know, Laura is going to start looking for deals um, today. And, I'm sorry, tomorrow and Sunday with me for me and her. And I don't want to do luxury flips. No. 
I want to stay away from luxury flips. And there's a re- couple of reasons for that. Less buyers. Okay. Uh, hey, Sherry, we are going to get to the contact information in just a second. We had to restart because there's a handful of people that asked us to restart. So we're getting there one more time. Okay. Just everybody, please be patient. Do guys, guys, do do you feel like I've ever left you in, in the dark on steps? Okay. Just know, trust the process. I promise you we'll get there. Okay. So um, what I, I want you guys to understand is that we try and stay in the median sales price in the market or under. Laura, why would that be an advantage to us? Um, there are so many advantages. Number one is there's a bigger end buyer pool. So since we are the cash buyer, Pace and I will be the one who will be taking the house down, who will be financing it, who will be doing the demo and the construction. We are the ones who are going to follow it to the finish line. And the finish line is finding that end buyer. So that person, the family, we're not going to violate any fair housing here on this, but someone who's actually going to move into the house and enjoy the house themselves. So you want as many of those possible people who are going to be interested in your house. So when you're around the median price point, that means that there's a lot more buyers than looking above it. So if you're in million dollar plus, there's just a lot less buyers who are interested in that. Less buyers means less people walking through your house, less offers coming in, and also something very important, it means you're holding on to that fix and flip for longer. So Pace and I found out really quickly that you play in that million dollar plus price range, you're going to hold on to that fix and flip with all the money in that you put into it. So your down payment, all of your hard money payments, all of the construction costs, all of the homeowner's insurance, all of those utility bills for that big house, you're gonna hold on to that for so much longer. You might take you eight months from start to finish. And at the end of it, you'll think, wow, I could have done three or four, $400,000 flips in the time that it took me to do one. So yeah, Pace and, and I you, decided it's just not worth it. You keep your guys busier as well. If you're gonna flip, you can keep your guys busier on four smaller properties, right? Rather than one big one. Imagine you go find this really good electrician, but you go do a million dollar home you're not going to be able to use that electrician more than once a year. So how are you going to negotiate better pricing and keep him busy? Whereas if you're doing like 400, $500,000 flips, you're going to be able to keep people busy because you're doing two or three projects at the same time. Does that make sense, everybody on the, on the construction side? Yeah. And then the other thing too, is I hate luxury buyers. Oh yeah. Right? They're the worst. They're yeah. the absolute worst. They want to blue tape your house. Mm-hmm. They want to go through and like nitpick. You know what's mm-hmm. great? Mobile home buyers are the freaking absolute best. The absolute best. They have no care in the world. And I, I'm not being disparaging to them. I'm just telling you, welcome to business. I'm telling you what's really going on in the business. I would rather do a $150,000 uh, mobile home and make 40 grand than a luxury home at $2 million and make 300 grand. I would much rather go after mobile homes. Okay. So, the reason why you, you'll look at these properties, right? Why are we hitting this home so hard? Is because Laura z- zeroed in on a map and she had multiple choices and she very quickly skipped over the one point million dollar obvious flip because she's like, I don't want a buyer. Guys, this is market research. I don't want a buyer who's willing to do luxury fix and flips. Now, here's another reason why that you want to stay away from it. How many flips are you going to be able to sell a luxury buyer on a yearly basis versus how many flips are you going to be able to sell a medium home price buyer on a yearly basis? Not many. Does that make sense? And some home flippers that get involved in these million dollar plus flips, they end up having one project for two years. And you, you talk to them and they're like, I bought this in 2020. And it's their baby. They're proud of their under the cabinet lighting. They're proud of the chandelier they picked in the living room. And it's like, bro, get out of this. Move on. Let's do some more deals. Let's go. Okay, so does everybody now understand why Laura skipped over higher price point houses? Give me a yes. Okay, so we can move on. Every time I ask you to say yes, that's me asking us to close the door on the conversation to move forward. So the more yeses I get, the more confident I am in moving forward that everybody understands it. 
Now, I know this price point that Laura jumped at. This is called, she's got neighborhood awareness. She understands what's going on in these neighborhoods. She's experienced. And that's actually going to be some of the homework I give you guys on day three, the final day, leading into next month's elephant challenge. I'm going to give you guys some neighborhood awareness homework that's a 30-day timeline for your homework, okay? Laura immediately knows, oh, the house on Pinshaw in Phoenix at 539, this is a great price point. I'm going to go focus on this house. So Laura, let's go through uh, your process now that we've explained that to everybody. Okay. So when you pull it up, not only is this beautiful, user-friendly, you get all the hot button details, 3, 3, 1,600 square feet, all that good stuff, year built, what it's sold for, but you can also look at photos of it. Um, I like to look at some photos of it just so that I know Hey, so how many times have you seen this freaking layout? Holy shinoli. This it's, is I've like, done, we did that on the TV show. I'm yeah, we did. And I've probably sold about 500 of the same house, but I like to look at this because when I'm having a conversation with a cash buyer, I'd like to be able to give them a genuine compliment. So, um, you know, I know the house, I know the layout, I know how the kitchen is cool. They put like a wine fridge. They took this kitchen that you have to turn a corner to an L and they made it really cool. It's beautiful. I love it. So I'm going to tell him that I like how he put that wine fridge and it looks like you could have like a cute little coffee bar up there. You know, that's, that's really cute. I'm glad he did that. So there you go. I've scrolled through enough. You guys, that's another thing too, is I see so many people just wasting all the time. Like there's going to be someone in here who's going to look through every picture and notice every little detail. And they're going to just not get on the phone with anybody and not do what they need to do. They're going to read all of this information. It's all useful information, but just scroll down, click on property history. And here's the magic stuff. So what we're looking at here, why can I not scroll? Oh my gosh. There you go. Okay. So, um, you see in 2022, so they bought this April, 2022, this took them a long time. So they might not be that experienced. It took them a year and two or, months. Or permits, right? True. So they bought it in April 2022 for 315. And they were the buyer when they acquired the property. So it's phase one holdings. And then you go up to here. This is the one that just sold. That's where we're seeing the pictures. And they sold it um, for, for 539. So a big difference from 315 to 539. But who knows what it used to look like and they're the seller. So I know right here, right away, this is not a wholesaler. This is someone that actually put their money where their mouth is. They put the down payment. They're the ones who did the construction and they're the ones who then went through with a real estate agent and found the end buyer. So super easy. Do you want me to show you one more time or should we? I think we're good. I think, I think, we, I think we show them how to find their the seller, the um, cash buyer's information. Perfect. Can anybody in here ever say, ever again, you don't know how to find a cash buyer. Can you ever say that ever again? And if you guys do, you, do no. your homework by going to Facebook and having conversations with those people straight to jail, don't go to Facebook, please. Here's the, here's the thing about my Facebook group. Okay. My students, my sub two community, they're trained to just be honest. So they'll tell you straight up, Hey, I do co-wholesale and I do have a pack of buyers, but I also am a buyer myself. So you'll know when they're trying to work with you and sell a deal for you. And they'll know, you'll know when they're trying to buy a deal from you direct and they'll be honest with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're in my, my creative finance, Facebook group, the free one, just know that my students are going to take care of you and be honest with you. Okay. So how many of my students in here are actual buyers? Give me a yes. Okay. So we got a lot of buyers in here that are actually buying deals, whether it's rentals or fix and flip. So a lot of you guys are going to be able to work with each other. Um, again, everybody that's a privy client is going to get uh, assigned to one of my leaders inside of Sub2. Um, and so we'll send out that PDF later tonight. I saw a couple of people asking, hey, are we assigned people yet? No, that's going to happen at the end of this in 40 minutes. Okay. So uh, Laura, what, what's our next step? So I know that you guys can go to op opencorporates.com, but truly the easiest way to do this is to go to Google. There you go. And type in the state that it's in. So this is Arizona. So Arizona Corporation Commission search. That's it. Click on this. Oh, it can't be that easy. And oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. 
copy the wrong one. It's phase one something. So you just copy and paste. There you go. The reason why I like going to the state specific corporate commission corporation commission is because it like there could be a phase one holdings LLC in Nevada. There could be a phase one holdings in Delaware. You know, you won't find any contact info there, but like just, you know, they're buying and selling in the state more than likely their LLC is in state. Most people aren't that intelligent to open their LLC in a different state. So there you go. Phase one holdings LLC. There she is. See, so click on it. Hope McClintock. This is and too it, easy. Like that's her name, Hope McClintock. And the good news is, is that she has a weird name. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to copy paste her name and I'm put in Google and I'm just going to see what I find. All in nation. Do we wow. think that's her? Mexican yeah. vanilla. Hope McClintock. Is that her? Do you guys think? I think that's probably her. Hope rebuilt. Hope rebuilt in Tempe, Arizona. I don't think that's her. That's not. It's definitely not her. This is definitely her. What Mexican vanilla? Yeah, she's part of the All In Nation. Did you not see that? Oh yeah. What, yeah, yeah what's yeah. All In Nation? Does anyone know? I'm sure we we have some All In followers yep. in here as well. Carlos. She Reyes. works for Carlos yeah. Reyes and Alex Signs. There oh. She is. There's their thing. Oh, we don't want that. That can't be a coincidence. There you go. Let me see if I can find, there you go, contact info. Hope's profile. Okay, so she has none. So we can either mess message her here or I could message her on. Well, isn't that um, a different profile? Instagram? Go cl click on that thing, her profile one more time, contact information. Is there a different link you can click on right there? No, oh, it's same just thing. her. Okay. Yeah. I wonder, she doesn't post anything. So that would be cool if she like posted deals and stuff. Laura, can I ask you a question? Is your next step to go to like, <coughs> um, True People Search or one of those? Yeah, we can definitely do that for her. Well, I was going to say is um, I would be careful. We've actually had YouTube pull down some content. Okay. By showing content information on yep. the videos that we've done live. So. Well, let me um, just do it on my phone. I'll go to True People Search and I'm going to find her right now. So guys, you can you, crew people search costs how much money, sweetheart? Nothing. Okay, guys, it's free. So Laura's gonna show she's gonna do it on her phone so it doesn't pop up on YouTube and, and pull us pull it down. Yeah, we don't so want that. She's gonna pull it up, get the information, we'll give her a call. Yep. I think, and by the way, Laura, will you click on that flip calculator while you're doing that? And I'll explain that while you're pulling that up. Oh, you don't want to dive into that yet. No, I'm just going to explain it for just a second. Sure. I'm not going to break. I'm not going to break it down. Just as you're pulling this up. So, guys, this spreadsheet right here, this flip calculator. Okay, this flip calculator. We're going to go through and kind of show you how to figure out whether a deal is a deal. Um, I'm an actual fix and flipper. Okay, so what I what really bothers me is when a wholesaler comes to me and sends me an opportunity. Has, how many people in here are real buyers, and a wholesaler sends you an opportunity, and you're just like, "Are you how how did you even think that this was a deal?" Has anybody ever looked at that with a wholesaler? Yeah, it, it honestly is the most embarrassing thing about our entire industry is that they've never talked to a buyer. They have no idea how to actually reverse engineer. There was a spread. Laura, Laura, unshare your screen for a second. Let me just talk on the big screen. Absolutely. So um, there was a, I'm there was, um, you'll get this a lot. Okay. You'll get this a lot where people will send you opportunities and you'll look at it and go, dude, how do you think this was an opportunity? And they go, well, you know, I got a, I got a hundred thousand dollars spread, meaning they got it under contract for 300 and they think you can sell it for 400. And you're like, okay, well, yeah, there's a hundred thousand dollar spread, but this property needs a hundred thousand dollar renovation, let alone my construction, like or my uh, hard money costs, let alone my private money lender, let alone my closing costs, let alone my agents. Like, even though this girl Hope, she bought that property for three twenty five, I believe three fifteen, and she sold it for like five seventy. Okay, that's a two hundred and forty or two hundred fifty thousand dollar spread. How much money do you guys think she actually made on that property? 
Jose says 70, 70% minus repair costs and assignment fee. That is not the correct calculation. There you go. Ingrid Hernandez, you are probably right. She probably made about 40, maybe $50,000. Okay. Maybe 40, $50,000 max. Okay. And that's it. And so a lot of you guys have to understand that you need to buy way deeper than you think you do. It's not 70% minus ARV. It's not, especially in a trending, trend, uh, trending market. Okay. I'm uh, sorry, trending down, a market that's trending downward. The truth is you need to be closer to like 50%. How many people believe that the interest rates are going to go up one more time, if not two more times? Yeah, at least once for sure. Okay, at least one more time. So what does that mean our market's going to do, uh, Benson? Is it going to continue? Is it going to go up or is it going to go maybe down or maybe stagnant? I'm thinking probably stagnant. I, I think we've seen it start to level out but people's uh, buying power is shrinking. There you go. I think it's going to be stagnant at best. I think it's going to go uh, and trend downward maybe 8% by the end of the year at worst, okay? We're not going to have a market implosion. Things are not going to completely crash, but it's stagnant. People are not able to sell their houses for what they thought. Some people have no equity. There's a lot of sub two opportunities, a lot of seller finance opportunities. There always has been. I mean, before the market ever did what it's currently doing, Laura and I, that's all we did was sub two and seller finance deals back four, five, six years ago. So not all of what we did, but probably 70, 80% of what we've always done has been creative finance stuff. The market always is good for everything. Cash deals, wholesale always works. Fixing and flipping always works. There's always something going on. There's always somebody going through something. There will always be an opportunity for you, Okay. Sub two is going to amplify, which is great. And that's exciting. But you got to realize that 70% minus, um, minus ARV minus your assignment fee is not the correct formula. The correct formula is talking to a buyer and saying, how much would you buy this house for? That is okay. the actual correct formula. Okay. 100%. Talking to a buyer and saying, what would you buy this house for is the appropriate formula. And the people that taught on YouTube that say 70% minus ARV are the reasons why people like Sabrina, bless her heart, I'm not picking on her. The reason why Sabrina it was deflated and lost hope in this business is because she said, see, look what Sabrina says. Sabrina says, that's so good. Who determines the value of anything? Who determines the value of a car, a house, uh, anything? Who determines? The buyer. So while you guys are out there trying to figure out, well, what should I offer for this house? Laura just taught you how to find a buyer. Sweetheart, did you find her contact information? Yeah. I wanted to give everyone a heads up when I was done and I had it, but to show you how quickly you can find it. But also we had um, Angie um, sent it to me as well. So she found her info really quickly. Angie too. Milanazzo? So, mm-hmm. Um, now, um, there's a couple of people saying, how can you buy deals at 50 cents on the dollar? Guys, it happens all the time. Privy actually has some amazing ways that it can show you. I remember last time we did an elephant challenge, Benson was pulling up multiple things that were on the market at like 30 cents on the dollar of ARV. They're all over the place. Yep. Here, here's the answer. Find motivated sellers. Okay. You're not trying to negotiate with people that have no motivation. You're calling motivated sellers. And we'll talk to you guys about that. Um, see, Mystique says, how do I get your calculator pace? I will be emailing everybody the calculator tomorrow after we go through it. We won't have time today to go through the calculator, nor was it on our homework, was it? Was going through the calculator today going uh, part of our homework, anybody? The answer is no. All we're doing is we're going to wrap up. We're just about done with our whole entire day. And we're going to then give you guys the homework and then send everybody that's a privy client. Um, let's see. Mickey says privy discount co code. Hey, Eric, will you put the side chat on pause for everybody that's not signed up for privy and type in start with privy.com and then tell everybody the code is pace. Type that in the side chat for everybody. Laura, let's call, let, why don't we call her and see if she's still buying? Beautiful. All right. I'm going to share my screen real quick again, just because I want to remind people kind of what we should be talking about once we're calling them because everyone's biggest fear is, oh my gosh, what am I going to say? I don't know what to say. So if anyone remembers, 
I scrolled through the pictures briefly. I'm not wasting my time because she might not even answer her phone. I need to find two to three cash buyers and have some decent conversations with them. So I looked through the pictures really quickly. I found something that I like and I can appreciate and I can give her a genuine compliment now. But what I'm looking for are this, these questions. And these can all go out to you guys too. But this is how you will eventually lead and direct the conversation. Now you don't wanna be super robotic about it, but this is the information that you would want to find out from them. And this is what's called a buy box. Am I overcomplicating things? No, it's great. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to give her a call right now. Guys, we put the chat on pause for a second so that you guys could see the code for Privy. And Laura's getting this, getting ready to go. Make sure she you guys give her- She is 24 years old. And Hello. Hi, is this Hope? Yeah, this is she. I hope this is Laura Morby. I am calling about a super cute flip that I think that you did on Pinchot, Pincho Avenue, 2917 Pincho. Um, are you referring to like a phase one investments thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I work for phase one investments. I don't do the flips myself, but, um, I work for the company that does. Oh, how nice. Okay. Perfect. Um, can I talk to you maybe about your guys's buy box, what you guys would be looking for? Are you the right person to talk to? I am not. So, well, so what I do is I'm the HR administrative director. We're currently looking for someone who can manage our fix and flips for us. Nice. Um, so they would be like, whoever we hire would be better equipped to discuss that and our CEO. Okay. If you want to send me some basic information of like how everything works, what you do, et cetera, like in an email, that mm -hmm. way I can present it to the owners. Sure. Um, that'd be great. And I can talk to them about it on Monday or yeah, Monday. Is it Carlos? Uh, Carlos is one of the owners. Um, Sal, there's another. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I saw that you worked for, or you were part of All In, and I was like, dang, girl, 24 doing your own flip. I was about to like fall over. I was like, I have to talk to her. I want to sell her <laughs> I, deals. I wish. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? You're at, working at the right place. You need to do deals because, <laughs> my gosh, you have all the people around you that can teach you all the best ways. So, I oh, hope. Yeah, no, that's one of the main reasons why I started working with them. It's very beneficial. Yeah, no, you have to. Okay, well, when you're 25, I hope that you call me back and you tell me that you did your first flip because <laughs> you you got all the all the resources at your fingertips. Yes, definitely. All well, right. I am definitely looking forward to talking to you more. Um, I might have to give you a call Monday with our CEO. Sure. Uh, not one of the owners, but the CEO, and now we'll go from there. You got it. Hey, thanks, Hope. Right. Appreciate oh, you. I'm sorry. Before I let you go. If you want to send that basic information, you can send it to my email address, which is hope at all in nation. Easy to remember. I got it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Hope. Right, thank you. Appreciate Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so interesting. Carlos and Sal, <laughs> that's their fix and flip, and they were, you know, let's find someone else real quick. It's going to take us two seconds. Why not? Why not find uh, another Eric, turn flip? on the chat for everybody. And um, by the way, guys, give it up for Laura in the side chat, please. She's what I love about my wife is she's she takes it to the end zone. She's great. She just gets the work done. She's my wife has never been somebody who dilly dallies. She just gets stuff done. You can see why when she got into my real estate business, we 10 x everything because she's awesome. Um, by the way, you know, we got to get you back into the sub two community and stop some foreclosures. People have been asking me lately. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I'd love to. Let's get on the phone with somebody. Oh, this one's so cute. Look at this little That's brick cute. guy. All right, let's keep going. We're going to do the same thing. We're still in the fix and flip blue button at the top. And I just clicked on one that was under 750. This one caught my eye. Look how cute that is. It's a two bedroom, one bath. I love it. Did a cute little wood floor, a blue door. I love a blue door. That one bathroom, it may be small, but it sure is cute. They cordon so cute. I love it. Okay, so all I'm going to do. Look at that cute little uh, classic stove. I know that's adorable. They do so a good job. I have multiple compliments that I could pay this person, but I'm not going to waste my time because all of these things, looking at house porn, will not make you any money. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom. Property history, Easy Homes Inc. Buyer 2022, seller 2023, Easy Homes Inc. I'm going to do the same thing. Copy paste. Go straight to Arizona Corporation Commission. 
Easy Homes Inc. Rob Binkley. Hey, B- does Binkley sound familiar, Pace? Yes. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go to True People Search. And again, doing it off camera because I don't want to dox anybody on the internet since this is on um, Rob. Oh, look at there. Eric Weinbrenner. Oh. Can I not call these people. Yeah, we know all these people. Yeah, we do. But let's. That's why I was Eric, like, you hey, know, Eric this- Weinbrenner ended up passing away. Yeah, I know. That's why I was like, should we not call them? All right. Rob's 54. It's Friday night. He's kind of a big deal. Do you think I should call Greg instead? Face more. Um, I think we call Rob. Let's call the COO, the chief operating officer. All right. Why not? Let's do it. Call, uh, she, uh, Colleen's like, call someone you don't know. Oh, the problem is we do so much business here. We know so many people. Guess what? Hope didn't recognize my name. People do actually get mad. I've done this bird dog business quite a few times and people will be like, I know who you are. I know who Pace is. And then the conversation will go well and they'll think it's not due to just having a conversation and how easy this is. They will assume that it's because of my name. So I know Daniel Quijano is in here. So I changed my name to Daniela Quijano. And then there you go. So easy mode. You know, if you, if you, um, married Dan, Daniel Keanu, you'd have to move to Albuquerque, right? Yeah. And you'd have to have seven dogs. I would have to have seven Yorkies. Yep. All all the Yorkies. All right. Let's see if this is him. I'm going to give him a call. Hopefully he's not having a nice steak dinner. Hey, Rob, this is Laura Morby. I am calling about a super cute little brick fix and flip that you did in Phoenix on 8th Street. Uh, yeah, I think we sold that one. You did. It's gone. You sold it in June. But I yeah. wanted to say, are you guys doing any other fix and flips in Arcadia Light right now? Not right this set. Do you know about us? Easy Homes by EasyForeclosures.com? I know a lot about you guys, actually. I was like, hmm, should I call Rob or is he having a nice steak dinner and I should just leave him alone on a Friday night? I'm about to have a steak dinner. Are you really? <laughs> well, at eight. Okay, well, yeah. you got some time. Well, I was just curious to see if you guys, if I find a couple good deals, would I be able to potentially send them to you? Yes, um, just, and you're pretty tough. I mean, we we won't be paying, buying uh, over 75 percent of value so don't try not to send me 100 percent deals i will definitely um, not i'm yeah. really good at finding some 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 good deals with some good profit margins how long have you been uh, are you a realtor or? i will do it all i'm a real estate agent we used to own a home investors franchise <laughs> i love doing it all so who's we you have a big crew or me and my husband we're kind of like a little okay. mom and pop shop so Us? yeah That's great. yeah That's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, can you, what's your buy box? I know you guys are a little bit picky on the return, which I can respect. I love that. I want to help you make money. Um, do you buy all property types? Are you guys just sticking with single family? Well, when people ask me that, I said about a couple years back, we bought in one day, uh, we'll, we'll buy anything. Like we buy probably on average, probably three or four houses a day. But um, wow. you typically don't see those on the website because they're sold before I even buy, uh, sell, uh, put them on the website. However, um, when people ask, what's our buy box? Yeah. You know, one day, uh, three years ago, <laughs> yeah. I bought a uh, mobile home for like 20 grand Ooh. in Tonopah. And then I bought a $10 million shopping center in Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> You'll do it all. In the middle of that. Yeah. In the middle of that. <laughs> yeah. You're truly one of the people that will do it all. Okay. So as long as, as there's some money to be made, you'd be interested. Yeah. Our, our game is for the past 25 years is we, we buy the property. I know my website extremely well. Yeah. And we have, we have 10,000 investors on the website just waiting. And so the second I put it on the website, they're typically gone within a couple of minutes. But so I will buy, and I know what sells on my website, the exact price. So I will buy if it sells on the website. So if I buy it, if I say yes, it's we're bought, it's bought, and then I, I take it down. I don't I don't do any of those crappy assignments. Right. And I fund it, and then I turn around and put it on the website. If it doesn't sell, I just rehab it, and put it on MLS or whatever. Absolutely. That's rare. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you that's are rare. like but actually look, look, probably this year we've only had 
we probably bought a thousand houses so far this year and literally we've only had i think two that we had to rehab and, and eighth was one of them no and way we ended, up, <laughs> we ended up netting over a hundred grand on it Ooh, oh my gosh i can't believe that i saw this randomly and i was like wow this this is so cute you guys did such a great job i was like i gotta call this guy yeah, we build too, so we're pretty good at rehabbing. Wow. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so glad that you and I connected. It sounds like if I find a good deal that's got some good meat on the bones, that even if you don't want it, you can help me dispo it. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, yeah, absolutely. And if you do have a really good property that you're taking down yourself, mm -hmm. you might want to email it to me anyways, just because I can always say, hey, I'll give you 20 grand to walk or whatever, whatever, you know. So, wow, yeah, I love you that. You don't just have to be a realtor. Like that. Okay, well, just so I don't bug any more, bug you during a steak dinner in the future, what's the best way or how do you prefer to be contacted or do you want me to talk email. to someone on your team? Email, beautiful. No, email. Okay, what's, what's, what's your email? I'll text you my email. This was yeah, great. I, I, I'm actually in the sauna at the gym right now. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Sheesh, I tell you what, I am lucky tonight. My gosh. All right. Well, hey, there you go. Okay. Well, I'll, t I'll text you right now my info. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. bye. Dude, wow. Look at that. That actually hey, is a your screen for buyer. a buyer. I'm going I'm to text in my info for reals, you know? Unshare your screen for a sec, babe. Yes, sir. Uh, hey, guys. Give it up for Laura. She's phenomenal. Um, there are, by the way, there are so many buyers just like him, more than you think. Some people are like, oh my gosh, that's a big whale. If you, if she spent another hour, she'd probably find another, maybe one or two of them. His business model is doing disposition. So he's a Keegley without being a Keegley. He doesn't say he's a Keegley, but that's what he does. And mm -hmm. he's a relationship guy, he just builds a lot of relationships with people here in town. He's been doing it for 25 years. So he's a guy that you can buy a deal from and flip it. That's what he does. He finds deals as well. And so he's somebody that you want to hang. We, we know him and, um, well, I don't know him. Pace knows him and Eric and all of them, but yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm good friends with, I was good friends with Eric Weinbrenner before he passed away. And then I'm he I, already texted me by the way. <laughs> yeah. So these guys, these, by the way, he lives in his house is like a $20 million house. He, they, these guys do a lot of business and they pick up their phone from an unknown number right? This is what happens, guys, right? It's a money There's, phone. It's your money phone. By the way, how did we find his information, guys? Privy. We found it through Privy. Has Laura spent any money, guys? Okay. Yes, he does buy creative. He does a lot of seller finance deals. I've done it. Eric Weinbrenner and I were really good friends. He passed away, I think, four years ago, and that was his partner. And Eric Weinbrenner was the, was the guy on their team I was doing all my deals with. And Eric and I had a lot of dinners, had, hung out a lot, went to each other's properties, spent a good amount of time on the phone together, probably did a good hundred deals together. And uh, the last deal we did together was actually an interesting deal. It was a sub two deal. We bought the deal sub two and the house was in foreclosure and we saved the seller from foreclosure, but unfortunately, Fortunately, the title company did not wire the money to the auction house and the house ended up going to foreclosure and Eric Weinbrenner ended up buying it and then working out a deal with me on the side so we could keep the house. It was, it was an awesome story for another day, mm -hmm. but we've been, these guys are great. They're in town. People are doing deals everywhere. Okay. You know, what's so here's crazy what we're going to do is I made two calls, made two calls. You got, both you found two buyers. Both people picked up. And I thought the first girl was just a 24 year old badass, but she works for also one of the largest home flipper wholesale dispo companies. So she works for Carlos and Sal. And then I call him, or the second house is him. That's crazy. Do you think anybody could ever say, I don't know how to find a buyer ever again? No, it's just an excuse. Yeah, They're just looking for excuse. a reason to say I can't do it. Creative avoidance. I mm -hmm. they they want to reaffirm their own beliefs in themselves or their lack of their own beliefs in themselves. Guys, do, everybody in the side chat say I want you guys to take a second and type this. Say I know how to find a buyer. Type that for me, and we can close the door. And I'm going to give you guys some um, 
homework tonight. Also, just I'm, some encouragement too. I have a personality type as far as this is concerned. I will not jump off a cliff in real life, but I will just rip off a Band-Aid and do stuff like this. Like it's embarrassing to make a call in general, but then you do it in front of thousands of people. That's dang embarrassing. But I'm like, I don't even care. I'm just going to call. If anyone realized I stuttered a couple times, I said the wrong word a couple times, but guess what? Rob still liked me. Rob still wants to do deals together. And even if Rob was like, wow, what a loser. I can't believe that she said the stupidest stuff. He still wants to, like, he wants to make money. All these people just want to make money. So they're like, even if Rob got off the phone and was like, wow, what an idiot. He doesn't care. He's like, I hope that idiot sends me a deal. You know, <laughs> like, what is it to him? You know, so it's like, don't be afraid. Just do it. Nike, just do it. That's my favorite thing. Every time I come up on one of these things, I swear I'd be saying Nike, just do it. But that's like my life motto for work. It's like, just freaking do it. It's so like, you're going to do something stupid and who cares? But at the end of the day, like people like Rob want people like us to call him. They want us to send him deals. He wants to buy stuff. He wants to make money. You know? Yep. You know, what's interesting is there's a lot of people, I'm looking at YouTube comments right now. So shout out to everybody that's over on YouTube. And I want to just highlight, there's people over here saying, I'm brand new. This is so enlightening. Guys, enlightening. There's people that have been trying to be in this business for two years that have not figured this out. Legitimately. Okay. People that have been trying to do this for six months, nine months that didn't know this basic element. Okay. There's Harry. He says 13 months didn't know this until today. So let's give it up for Privy and Benson. Let's give it up for Laura, my wife. We are going to find out the sex of our baby tonight. Does any Benson, do you want to take a bet on which what the sex is? You know what? We should tell everyone an oh elephant boy. challenge tomorrow what it is. Should we tell everybody in the elephant if challenge tomorrow? If you guys tomorrow? show up tomorrow, we'll tell you what it is before be, Can you, I guess the have race? To, like Pull, yeah, guess we'll the have race. To handcuff pace so he doesn't <laughs> put it on Instagram the second it happens because that's pace. I'll, his I'll tell you the race right now. The race of the child is a deal maker. There you go. That's, <laughs> that's it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't want to guess. Obviously, it's 50 50. I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping for a boy. Benson, if it's if it's a boy, we're naming it Privy. How about Benson? That's a pretty <laughs> cool name. <laughs> I do like Benson's actually a really cool name. Yeah. Um, guys, was this good? Everybody have a good day. Did we feel like we moved forward in our businesses? Did everybody feel like they learned some stuff? They got real technical things. How many times have you guys been to challenges and it's just a bunch of like hocus pocus mindset, magical stuff. You walk away and you're like, yeah, I didn't really get much from that. It just made me feel emotional, but then I don't know what to do with my emotions. This is day one, guys. My wife and I are going to be back tomorrow, day two, morning time. We're going to be reaching out to agents and looking for deals. And here's the cool thing about this. Okay, I'm going to tell you what's great about this is once you find a buyer and you have their cell phone number, what we always do when we are looking at an opportunity is we say, hey, buyer, the, Laura will do this tomorrow with Rob. She'll say, hey, Rob, we're looking at this property here. What should I pay for it? And how fast do you think Rob could figure out the price of that house being in this business for 25 years? Pretty darn quick. Yeah, not even not even three minutes. Literally, he can look at a, the, the cross streets and go, oh, yep, $300,000. Sight unseen, I'll pay $300,000 for that. This is the value of having a buyer before you go and negotiate with agents and, and all of that. Does that make sense? And by the way, Laura, how many buyers will go around, actual real buyers will actually go around you as a wholesaler? None. Why? Because they wouldn't crap all of a relationship that's going to bring them 20 more deals this year. Yep. Truth. They also don't have time. <laughs> Rob doesn't have time. Rob doesn't have time to go. I heard, um, was it Sabrina? Was that who was up here earlier? Yeah, Sabrina. She's super sweet I heard sweet Sabrina girl. up here and she said, before I got on stage, she said, 
that she didn't want to say the city in, in Arizona that it was in because she does, it's not under contract yet. Rob will never, like, maybe he'll as he's up, calling it, he might see that you. it's listed, but he will never call that agent. He will never call that seller. He will never try to go around me. Why would he? He, do, no, he Number one, he doesn't have time. Number two, why would he do that? Like it, right. there, it makes no sense. Pace, would you ever do that when people send you deals to buy or they send it to Molly, Molly at America Home Offers or Molly at PaceMorby.com because that's how you direct your buy box to go there. Mm -hmm. Would you ever go around and call an agent? Would Molly ever go around and call an agent? Like we just don't have time and we would never do that because it's like you brought us a deal. Okay, whether or not we buy it or not, go find five more. No. You want to buy, buy houses. Yeah. You want to make money. The, the people that go around people very quickly get weeded out of this business. Mm -hmm. um, I, you rarely ever run into them. The people that will go around you. Uh, hey, Andres Vas Vasquez, everybody that's signing up for Privy is asking, what's the Privy code? Guys, go to startwithprivy.com and everybody in the side chat, what's the code? It's pace. Yeah. Code is pace or missionary. You can type in missionary style. Let's see if that one works. Okay. Um, okay. So, I, babe, I'm so proud of you. You're so good. Um, unbelievable. I, I, amazing. Well, Pace Morby, the legend himself, thinks that that call was good. See, you guys just freaking make the call. Everyone can do the call. Has anyone met me in person? That's another thing, too. I like to ask people if people have met me in person. I am so awkward. I'm like the most introverted introvert in the history of introverts. So you know what? If, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can call someone, I knew he was a big deal before I called him. If I can, without taking a second breath, second guessing myself, just pick up the phone, call him and have a conversation, you can do it too. Yes. Now, here's what we're going to do tonight. Okay, homework, your homework for tomorrow. This is going to matter because when we start doing the thing tomorrow of actually reaching out to agents, all right, you're going to say, well, how do I know if it's a good deal or not? Well, guess what? We're not going to teach you how to comp. We're going to rely on you to ask your buyer, what should I pay for this deal? That is the process that we are following on this elephant challenge. Does everybody understand that? Give me a yes in the side comments, please. Everybody understands that's the process. We're not going to teach you how to comp here. If you want to learn how to comp, go back to the elephant challenge number one we did last year. It was a nine-day challenge. This one's only a three-day challenge. And you can find those repeats on YouTube. You can go back and rewatch those. Very few people will watch them because people want to watch live stuff. But your homework tonight, okay, between tonight and tomorrow, okay, you have all day tomorrow, all day tomorrow, your job is to find two buyers. That is your homework. Okay. Your job is to find two buyers. Also, to, to, tonight or maybe tomorrow morning, everybody that signs up with Privy, we're going to send you a, a PDF tomorrow morning with all the sub two leaders in the Elephant Challenge. So you guys can link in with people tomorrow and have teams to finish the challenge together. Okay. And People then tomorrow, are asking if they need to find names or if they need to contact them, you have to contact them. You have yes, to you have to contact to them. them. Yes, yeah. you have to do what Laura just did. She just showed you. Uh, uh, tomorrow, time that we're doing this tomorrow, it's going to be early. So you got very few, you got very little time to do this tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are doing the elephant challenge at eight o'clock Arizona time. And we are actually going to start calling and doing the thing about nine o'clock. Don't show up at nine o'clock, show up at eight o'clock. We're going to rehearse some things. Make sure you guys get paired up on teams. If you show up at nine o'clock, you're going to go, what are we doing? And everybody else is going to be on a team. Okay. Um, what time EST time? I don't know. The only state in the country that matters is Arizona. I'm sorry. Why? Because we're the only people that are smart enough to keep our freaking clocks the same time all year long. <laughs> okay. Y'all, you, you guys know you wake up twice a year and change your clocks. Did you realize that? Have you ever like, as an adult, 30, 40, 50 years old, you wake up in the morning and go, ah, better change my clock. I'd do it twice a year. 
Arizona figured it out. Okay. Tomorrow, eight o'clock Arizona time. That is currently 11 o'clock Eastern time. Okay. We are going to pair you guys up on teams tomorrow. Everybody understand? When are we finding teams tomorrow? Are we doing it tomorrow? Or are we doing it right now? Okay. It's not 6 a.m. Central time tomorrow, guys. That's 10 a.m. Central. Okay. It's 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. Okay. You have plenty of time to call some buyers. When you come in tomorrow, 8 o'clock Arizona time, God's state, okay? God loves our state more. He chose to not have us have sun, daylight save. What do you guys call it? Knucklehead savings times? What do you yeah. guys call it? Daylight savings time. Daylight savings times. Yeah. Knucklehead time. Tomorrow, we're going to put you guys on Teams, Okay. Everybody that is a privy client will get put on a team and we will make sure of it so that you guys have team members to follow through with the rest of the, the next couple of days. We are not putting people on teams that are not action takers. Okay. You need to be an action taker. So privy clients will get that list and then we'll pair you guys up from eight to nine. And then Laura will come in from nine to 11 and we will. Okay. We will. Call agents and start working deals. Tomorrow, what we're going to do is we're going to work deals for about an hour. And then the rest of the time, we're going to show you guys how to fill out contracts. Everybody want to see, to how, see how to fill out a contract? Okay. Benson? Oh, yeah. You're the freaking man, brother. I appreciate you. Laura, oh, you are unbelievable. You. I cannot wait to get you pregnant. Um, I'm done. But also, everyone think Benson that he made something that you literally click a button. <laughs> like, what can were everyone doing acknowledge years how ago? crazy that is? For the entire country, you click on a button and you can find a cash buyer. Crazy. Wow. It's pretty amazing. I will say that it is all of our amazingly smart people on our team that built this thing. I just happen to be sitting here with you guys, but I was super impressed with you, Laura. Like, that was amazing like just so smooth you don't you don't know how good that was that was just so good um but also too i want to thank everybody for having me and just all the nice comments and i i want to say one thing and this is important like this is friday before a fourth of july weekend and i tell you guys you're going to have opportunities to go do non-real estate stuff this weekend you're going to have somebody trying to lure you to go have a party or go to the lake or go do fireworks or mess around. You need to be here. If this is your priority and this is what's most important to you is, is you succeeding in this business, please don't get distracted. I hope we break privy tomorrow. <laughs> we might. And how can we not love you, Benson, when you're helping all of us make money so easily? This is so easy. So the nice. steps that would have taken a bunch of different programs that all cost a ton of money and take you hours and hours and hours to find one Rob. And then you have to get on the phone. I was able to do it in about 10 seconds flat and have conversations almost immediately. So thank you. Oh yeah. It's my pleasure to be here. You guys enjoy the next two days of the elephant challenge. Uh, the best time and money, you know, well, there's no money that you will ever spend. Um, thanks for having me. It was great to see your guys' faces. And um, yeah, have a great 4th of July. You're the best, Benson. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Um, uh, Eric, give me two minutes by myself, brother. Eric, look at Eric. Look at my, and look at my wife's hair. Oh my gosh. I love that woman. Love that woman. Hey, guys, super proud of you guys for showing up today. Give yourself a pat on the back. You try and make this fast, efficient. If you feel like you walked away with some value today, please make a comment in the side chat as a thank you to Eric. Eric had to, you know, what's funny is Eric learned how to use Zoom today, just so you guys know. <laughs> it's a lot of work. You guys don't realize like when you're putting a production together and you're doing all these things and handling people and chats and this, that, and the other, I have done it for so long that I do it by myself. And tonight, Eric's first try at it was tonight. So good job, Eric. Amazing, amazing, amazing. 
Again, I'm super proud of my sub two community, the Gator Tribe, Top Tier TC. Thank you for coming in here and helping me lead the people in the free group, the baby elephants that are just looking to get started. Thank you guys so much for being industry leaders. I appreciate you. I'm so grateful for you. I love you. I adore you. And uh, look forward to hanging out with you guys tomorrow for three hours and Sunday for three hours before we take off to Montana for a month, hang out with the uh, our community at Community Camp. So thank you guys 